to order this meeting of the Waterbury Select Board on Monday the 16th of October. First item on the agenda is to approve the agenda. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. All right, moved and seconded. Any discussion? Um, I have a couple of proposed amendments. Um, first on consent agenda, adding a couple of liquor licenses. Um, the first is for Farmhouse Flowers. It's a commercial kitchen permit for 2007 Guptill Road. The next addition is Arandas Mexican Cuisine LLC, a second class license and tobacco license for One River Road. And Amps LLC, a one time occasion permit for 5 Stowe Street for 1028. Um, and I would also add a uh, discussion of a uh, public works recommendation on stop signs at 840. Okay. Uh, do I have a motion to accept the amendment? So moved. All right, seconded. That's a question mark. Seconded. <laughs> yeah. say aye. All right, we're voting on the amendment to the agenda. <laughs> All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right, now on, uh, do I have a motion to approve the amended agenda? So moved. And second? Second. All right. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right, we have an approved amended agenda. Uh, the next is the consent agenda as amended. Do I have a motion? Motion to approve consent agenda as amended. I'll second that. All right. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? <coughs> Any abstentions? No. Okay. The consent agenda is approved. Uh, next is the public discussion. Anyone would there, that would like to address any item that's not on the warrant agenda, please uh, come forward. And I would ask that you restrict your uh, comments to three minutes or less. Yes, Mike. I just want to give a uh, public acknowledgement of appreciation to uh, Skip Flanders and Bill Woodruff. I was at the uh, dedication for the, at the, at Edward Ferrars, um, and both Skip and Woody gave very, a, a I learned more about Edward Farrar than I ever thought I would ever find out. And it was actually quite interesting. So it would have been nice, it would have been better attended, probably was everyone was hoping for a solar eclipse. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But no, I, I really think, uh, you know, they did a great job and just it's a bit of gratitude that they did that. Right. And thank you for attending that. I missed it. But, uh, well appreciated. Anything else? Uh, Chris. Uh, this is way outside the box of what this meeting's about, but I just want to say that I condemn the acts of hatred that are taking place across this planet from one end to the other. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know what's unraveled our sanity in the last couple of years, but it seems to be getting worse. Um, and for somebody like me, believe it or not, it brings a lot of anxiety to me. Um, and I just hope that even, even in our own community, I'm seeing much more disrespect than I've ever seen before. Uh, and I, quite honestly, don't know what to do about it. And uh, just wanted to voice my opinion about it. That, uh, All right, well, thanks. It's, it's concerning. Any specific thanks. incident that uh, has provoked? You know, In our community, you mean? Yeah, yeah. So I mean, worldwide, had a, there's no, no had a guy, I had a guy pass me this morning up here by Dun and Jerry's, and he almost ran two other people off the road that were coming the other way. Hmm. Um, I caught up to him, and he had words, and he was late. Uh -huh. So to sacrifice or put in danger other people's lives simply because you couldn't get your ass out of bed in the morning mm. uh, seems a little extreme, you know. And if 
I'm seeing things like that everywhere. You get on the interstate in the morning, and the disrespect of people driving on the road is, is outrageous. Um, and having a CDL license, you know, you pay attention, you have to pay attention all the time. Because, right. But, uh, yeah, just the way people are treating other people and uh, I don't know if it's the stress of, you know, the economic times or the, the uh, issues to do with race and religion and other things like that that are prompting it or what it is, but uh, it is becoming disheartening. Yeah. So, yeah well. Appreciate my time. Thanks. Sure. Yeah, I'm sorry. Sorry for your experience. And, you know, we're certainly dedicated to her. Trying to improve respect within our community to the extent that we that we can. I think. Um, on another note, I'll just mention that I had a, a great conversation with Jane Willard uh, about uh, the uh, restorative justice program. She's been serving on the panel uh, that was formed uh, under the auspices of the village of Waterbury uh, several years ago uh, and continues to function. Uh, she gave me a great update uh, and uh, we'll try to get that on the agenda for uh, maybe the first uh, meeting in uh, November uh, when the coordinator from uh, Middlebr uh, from Montpelier will be able to join us as well. What was her name? Uh, I don't have the name of the coordinator. Uh, she's who brand you new. Spoke with. Sorry. Oh, uh, Jane Willard. She uh, served for many years on the historical committee and uh, has served, continues to serve on the uh, as a six-person panel uh, uh, for restorative justice uh, for both Waterbury and the Mad River Valley. The director hmm? is oh, Carol Plant. Carol Plant. Right? Carol Plant. Yeah. Plant. Yeah. And apparently, she's brand new. Relatively. All right. Any other public comments? Hearing none, we'll move forward. Um, initial discussion for the format, future format. Of, Nomination. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I skipped. A major oh, one. <laughs> Nominations for the Natural Disaster Preparedness Committee. We have five vacancies. Uh, I believe we have a couple of candidates. And one of them uh, sitting here with us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, uh, Anna is interested in conservation. Oh, sorry. Conservation. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Mr. Malter, would you mind coming forward? Sure. I do expect the other candidate, either remotely or in person, so we just want to be conscious of the time. Mm -hmm. We can come back. To it. Yeah, absolutely. I just want to let you know he is expected. Okay. Yeah. Oh. All right, John, uh, would you mind introducing yourself and giving us a brief uh, summary as to why you'd like to serve on the preparedness committee? Well, John Walter, I've uh, been a firm believer in service all my life, but I think I have some background that would be relevant to uh, the Natural Disaster Preparedness Committee. I, Worked for the state of Vermont for 17 years before I went off on my own uh, in the consulting world. Uh, and in that position, I wound up as the director of the waste management division. But earlier on, I was the uh, on scene coordinator in the oil and hazardous materials spill response program. And uh, once I went off into my own world uh, in the consulting field, I was also. Uh, the author of Vermont's Survivable Crisis uh, Management Plan back in the dark ages. <laughs> 94, <laughs> one, of, one of my major recommendations was that the state EOC uh, should be moved because it's in the floodplain. <laughs> <laughs> I was a little ahead of my time, I guess. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think I, I, I have an awareness of a lot of things. Uh, I'm a, a person who has always had an interest in history. And one of the, when I first started working for the state, I was the floodplain zoning administrator. It was one of my 
many hats. And I got interested in the 1927 flood, and I read up a lot about that and uh, collected a lot of uh, memorabilia on uh, how and why and all the issues associated with that. But it's more than just flooding. And I, I guess what I wanted to say really quickly is uh, we're looking at a lot of different potential natural and technological issues that could be out there. And I know uh, there's probably a great deal of stuff that's already been produced here within Waterbury through the uh, fire service, the town, and, and the like. But you know, I'd like to just be able to offer assistance where I can, and uh, you know, see what's out there. Uh, you know, do whatever. And the price is right. <laughs> Other questions from the board? Um, I yeah. Okay. Um, what drove you to go into the field that you went into? Oh, uh, probably 1968, driving across country uh, and crossing the Cuyahoga River and seeing it on fire. You got to see it on fire? I got to see it on wow. fire. Wow. And that was one of those seminal things that were like, no, this is not the way our lives should be. And that really, I mean, I was a geology major and I was going out to a geology field camp, but this kind of really turned me on things. My, my master's thesis at UVM was on potential problems of oil pollution on Lake Champlain, mm -hmm. uh -huh. uh, which everybody thought was things associated with the barge traffic and the oil tank farms, but the major contributor was actually uh, runoff from uh, oil from the roads, really? Just from uh, the road? inefficient two-cycle motors, mm -hmm. uh, engines, and uh, the like. And it's just a combination of a lot of things. And I've uh, kind of grown up in it. I was involved with the EPA uh, while I was working for the state uh, in doing some of the work that was when did a spill become a spill? I mean, this was kind of the early, mm -hmm. the early days. I mean, I'm, I'm older than glaciers. <laughs> so I've been around for a while. Mike and, and I'll give you a run for your money. <laughs> <laughs> right. But it's, you know, it's something that if I can make a contribution to the community, I'm willing to try. I guess that's all. I'm not here for any glory other than to work with you guys. Mm -hmm. Perfect. What glory could there be? Nothing <laughs> <laughs> greater. Anything else from the board? And he has a license plate with recycle. <laughs> That's his wow. license plate. And, no reason, reason. And, and the reason for that is because I wanted to get everybody in Vermont to get something made with recycled material. And I got the state uh, purchasing office to buy recycled aluminum. Uh, for the plates? Use. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Just a bunch of old Budweiser cans, huh? <laughs> <laughs> exactly, yeah. But they have paid them. <laughs> anyway. So do you have, uh, I'm kind of curious, have you got a sense of how often the group would meet, uh, what the charge, I, I saw that was to research and develop and uh, the best program possible, but what are you guys really looking for? I mean, obviously, a volunteer group isn't going to do the uh, Great American Novel. will be out there to assist. Well, that isn't on the list yet, but I think Kane uh, put together a summary of uh, the, the charges. I did. For the, I don't think I have a paper copy. Um, uh -huh. Give us a but, run down from your memory. Oh, well, I've got it on the phone. Yeah, um, exactly. Electronic memory. Yeah. That's right, Tom and I talked about a coordinator. I can skip over that part. Um, draft an update to the emergency response handbook. We submitted this right select board. This was all approved by us. I'm trying to find something that like best drives it home. Yep. Uh, Alyssa, in the meantime? Yes. I was going to give us that. We'll just say, I think, John, you did a really great job identifying, and it was so great to hear that, like, you know we have town fire service, and you know we have other efforts going on, and I think recognizing that though flooding is not the only disaster, you know, personally, as someone who wasn't in this community during Irene, it was an opportunity for us to reflect and say, 
we did some things really well and we have some systems that really work and we built some systems that actually worked well in this case and how do we do that moving forward in case of flooding or as you pointed to have the ability to respond in other directions so um, i think some of that review and synthesis is also going to be part of it so in addition to future planning saying like okay kind of what worked and how do we position ourselves going forward yeah. particularly in those gaps um, you know whether it's like it or whether it's the fire department's really good in the first you know, X amount of time, and after that, they really could use support for this particular scope of work. So I think also just hearing your knowledge and interest as someone who's worked in the community um, and who probably got phone calls from us about those hazardous waste collections, um, well, you would be a person to say, you know, this is yeah. what likely like the Resource Alliance could do, but we could really use helpers doing the pickups from houses. So how do we make a plan for that? So next time it happens, we can do it quickly. I, th I think the biggest thing is communications mm -hmm. all the way around. No matter what we do as a group, we need to keep communications open. There should be no judgmental issues associated mm -hmm. with this. It's just important that people talk and that anything that's developed, you have to have the recognition that it be maintained and updated because that's the difference of making something that'll work and something that's just going to sit on a, on a bookcase. And that's part of the charge is, up, is the update and maintenance um, and like having at least a group, a group of brains who know where it is, how to get to it, and you know can also pass that knowledge around because um, things have changed since Irene, and technology has changed, and communication and response has changed, and trying to continually keep that up to date so that it's not, you know, oh shoot, that was great, you know, 12 years ago, but well, and now? as as you can tell, being from the generation of the glaciers. I'm not like Kane where I go on mm -hmm. my phone and have all my notes down there. This is my, I, I do use computers and everything. But it's not, you know, my, my, my world is more analog than digital. And uh, that's just because I'm older than dirt. But I, you know, I'm, I'm willing to try and work with folks that, and I, I welcome younger folks that are specialized in that. And if nothing else, I can offer Perspective. Well, I think that's part of it too. Is not as there are a lot of folks in this town who have the same perspective and experience as you. And how do we make sure we include them? How do we make sure we have something available for them? And that response, if not everyone's going to go on Facebook, you know, how are we out reaching out? So that type of perspective is going to be really key. So I appreciate you bringing that. Okay. And I think it's going to be something that the group's going to form and going to figure out what they're going to because it's a new committee. So I don't think it's, you know, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven that they're going to accomplish. I think it's going to be, you know, we have a general task that, you know, that not just dealing with flooding, dealing with all sorts of natural uh, disasters and natural preparation. And then you guys figure out a way, how many times you, do you want to meet quarterly? Do you want to meet, you know, once a month? You know, you're going to figure that out. And I don't think there's something that, you know, we had something, Kane figured out something a little, I think you had something that they would start meeting monthly, I think? Yep, it was monthly until, right. until decided that we could go quarter. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, we'll keep getting our sea legs. Mm -hmm. Because I think what's, what's going to be important is to see what information you have for inventories of various stuff. Right. Whether it's mm -hmm. parking areas that are above the floodplain or it's who's got certain kinds of equipment that's available that can be called upon. Well, there's just a lot of things out there. You're yeah. selling yourself, John. I know. Well, I already know. Yeah. 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 But it's yeah. like you've you listened like to our past right. three yeah. meetings. You're saying all the I'm things serious. that we talked about. <laughs> yeah. like yeah. music to our ears. <laughs> anyway. Um, and a uh, number of people, uh, particularly da Danny and Alyssa, uh, were uh, very active along with Kane, uh, were very active uh, in coordinating the response to the flooding in July and uh, put together an after action analysis uh, which may serve as sort of a so base some basis of information for a, for a guide going forward. Um, yeah, I worked with Bob Butler. Mm -hmm. The dumpsters are? I mean, so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> He's earned that. Um, 
Uh, Kane, do we have uh, different terms of office for volunteers serving on this committee? I can't remember, to be honest with you. I think we said three members. years for now, mirroring the select board. Yeah, 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 it was, it was, a, it was yeah. like an exact. Like the select board. Like yeah, select board, yeah. Select board yeah. mirror, yeah. Right. Uh, do, you, do you have a preference for how long you serve? or? I'm here. <laughs> I, I mean, love I'm, it. I'm, I, if I can help, like I said, I, I enjoy what I do with the Alliance. We had a great collection on Saturday. Mm -hmm. So we got a lot of stuff out of people's basements and Ooh, nice stuff yes, like that. Nice to get rid that's of for another time mm -hmm. for me to talk. These are repaired. How could he help? Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Excellent. And okay. how many, how many uh, cornhole uh, teams are here? Mm, I can't <laughs> make it. Saturday. I'm serving food. Yeah. OK. Mm -hmm. Sorry. I, I got a pretty good lefty toss. Um, <laughs> Any other questions for John? Okay. All right, thank you. Uh, we'll uh, be, I think, uh, continuing to look at uh, other candidates, and then we'll uh, make the vote as to who's going to be sure. appointed. Okay. okay. Thanks. Thanks. Good to see you all. All right. And I believe our other candidate was Forrest McDonald. Yeah, I just emailed him to ask him if he was having log-on issues. He told me he'd be joining remotely. All right. Uh, we can wait for him then. Uh, in the meantime, uh, which preference do you want to uh, take a vote on John or uh, move right on to uh, the uh, Conservation Commission? I'll go with Anna because she's here and, I'm, okay. and then we can make a motion for that committee all at once. All right. Uh, Anna Black. Hi. Come on forward. Hello. 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 And you've expressed interest in joining the Conservation Commission? Yes. Would you mind just taking a few minutes and explain us uh, some of your background and why you're interested? Absolutely. My name is Anna Black. Um, I grew up in Stowe, but only moved to Waterbury in April. Um, live right down the street and love it. Um, I wanted to join or have want to join the Conservation Commission partially because I think that my background, I could be very helpful. Um, I am a lawyer <coughs> in Stockholm and French. I do a lot of real estate transactions um, and title research and all of that. Um, I also am on the board of Stowe Land Trust and have been for the last mm -hmm. five years. I'm actually currently their secretary. Um, so I know that we do have one project in the pipeline for the Shootsville corridor, which is great. Um, and I was thinking about it, and I don't think that there would be any conflicts, I think, because we, we work so collaboratively. But of course, if there ever was any question of anything, I am the first one to take a step back. <laughs> um, yeah, I just really had, since we've moved to Waterbury, it, it was sort of a aha moment of this is where I really want to be, and just love this community, and want to do whatever I can to help out. I don't know if you guys also saw my letter. I was like, I'd also love to join this and this. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'd love we'll to join the task force. We'll see how many appointments we can make here. Conflicts with my schedule, and I see you're not looking for anybody to help out at the library. But <laughs> if that opens up, I love the library. <laughs> There are, there are separate jurisdictions, so you yeah. have to apply to them. I, um, I proposed t-shirts. <laughs> I was like, can we please get library t-shirts? <laughs> the friends of the I actually think it's Friends of the Library Week as a totally random assignment. Oh, is so it? maybe okay. maybe into yeah. t-shirts. Oh well, yeah, I took one of those little like the child things that they have that it's like, what do you love about the library? Like put in your first name. I was like, you have free books, but I would love t-shirts. I'd probably be a fairy. <laughs> anyway, Great. back on topic. Yes. Questions from the board? Yes, Mike. Okay. Welcome. Um, I can speak as a charter member of the Conservation Commission when I started, a former chair of the Conservation. I think I was on the Conservation Commission for seven or eight years. Thank you for your interest. Um, I know they're kind of in a little bit of a, a, a downswing in terms of participation and every, every bit of help. I want to, I would like to hear your impression of the balance between environmental protection and development. Sure, yeah, um, and that's definitely something that I've had to think about a lot as it's something that um, for the Stowland Trust, we just redid our whole plan. Um, 
our whole strategic plan, which is like a five-year plan. Um, and certainly having grown up in the area and seen how much it's changed, housing is you know definitely an, an issue. Um, I mean, I think it's really, really important to conserve our natural spaces as much as we, we possibly can. Um, one of the things that I love most about Vermont is that you can go outside and just walk, kind of wander off and have quiet time outside. I think that's really important for mental health um, and the health of our whole environment. Um, but I think that it, it actually really can be something that we can work sort of hand in hand with. I don't think it's an either or situation with you know helping there be affordable housing and basically trying to make sure that we're on the same page because you know being a conservationist isn't necessarily saying I'm anti-development at all, but being somebody who, who does development, you know, you want to do it in a smart way that's conservation minded. So you want to, you know, making sure that there are enough green spaces and, and all of the things that we can do to work together and make it as best as we can for everybody. Thank you. Yeah. Other questions for the board? Yes. I'm just curious if you had the opportunity at all to sit in or listen in on any of the conservation commission meetings at all so far. I haven't. <laughs> um, I did have um, a couple of emails with their current chair. We were supposed to meet up yesterday, but I had a stomach bug, so I, <laughs> yeah. Um, so I'm kind of giving a little bit of a breath, but. Um, uh, no, not really. I, but I did read over their bylaws and kind of look at all the information on the website, um, and it kind of goes hand in hand with what I've already been doing. And I just, yeah, I think I would love to be able to help. I think I have some ability to do that. So. All right. Any other questions? All right, Anna. Thank you so much. Thank you. I think we'll be. Absolutely. Finishing our discussion, then we'll uh, sure. decide to move on to the point. And I actually do have to run, so I apologize. <laughs> okay. Oh. Find out about how our deliberations work. Mm -hmm. um, Anna, while you're still here, we have um, one appointment that would go end in 2024 and one that would end in 2025. Do you feel strongly about time you would be interested well, whatever in? Whatever is, is, like, makes the most sense mm -hmm. for you guys. I'm my reading. Long, I, mean, I guess I guess my one question on that. I guess my one question on that is: Are there Thank you. Sorry, term, sorry. back to back term limits? Like, if I did 2024, I couldn't restart, or no, you can. Okay, then yeah, yeah whatever yeah. works most is most yeah. logical for you guys from a planning perspective. Mm, thank you. Yeah. You'd be willing to serve two years. Yeah. Love it. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm here. Term limits for many of our commissions. Okay. Not to my knowledge. Great. Thank you all. Is there a question about the terms? All right. Michael was asking if we have the term limits. Have you heard? I think we did. I don't believe so. Have you heard that from Forrest? Um, unfortunately, I have not. All right. And was he the one who also applied for conservation or another committee a while back? The name was just missing, though, but I couldn't find it. It doesn't mention that. Okay. Yeah, nothing. Bye. This is Amy. Um, I'm here kind of filling in for Marcy Blovell, who okay. did in an application yeah. for the Conservation Commission. She just unfortunately had a, a, a conflict where she couldn't participate in tonight's meeting. Um, so I said that I would, uh, as an existing Conservation Commission member, I would come and um, answer any questions if you had any. Unfortunately, she's not available to, to do that herself. All right. She did submit a, an application, uh, so we can uh, use that. And um, in the meantime, uh, do you want to just speak to her candidacy? Sure, yeah. So um, I've known Marcy for quite some time, but uh, more recently got re-engaged with her prior to becoming a commission member, but also um, uh, through the lens of the Shootsville Hill Wildlife Corridor. So we, we live kind of inside of that. Uh, she's on one hill and I'm on another. Um, so that's my personal experience. And then as I've been um, interacting with her on this um, discussion topic, it made me really aware of how much um, legacy understanding and research and background that she's 
invested to make sure that she understood all all aspects of um, the topic at hand. And then as I started to join the commission, um, I got more acquainted with Billy and and Billy too had had some interactions with her and they've all been very positive and we both support and sanction her um, her involvement. Um, and he unfortunately couldn't participate either. So I'm kind of being the spokesperson for, for both of them. Um, um, to, to say that we do support her her nomination and participation. And she is available um, as you're thinking about term positions. She's open for which other, whichever is available. And it seems like not only is she interested in participating at length, she's also, um, I believe, the same sentiment that Mike had said. We've recently had to kind of look at the uh, engagement level of the commission members. And that was something we spoke very pointedly with Marcy about, and I believe Billy did with Anne as, Anna as well. Um, and she's willing to roll up her sleeves, if you will, and, and do what needs to be done as it relates to our priorities. Sounds great. Uh, questions from the board? No? No, thank you. Yeah, thanks for being here. Uh, Karen, did you say that there are two uh, two-year positions open, uh, and she would be willing to serve for two years? Amy, she was open to that. Yes. All right. Okay. All right. Well, sounds like she's getting a fairly good ringing endorsement uh, from a current board member, um, as well as uh, the uh, chair of the committee or commission. Um, so I guess if there's no more questions, we can move on to the final candidate. Yeah. All right, Amy, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Under the desk. Is that right? We're gonna pause for a this technical. Is, uh, technical they have lost this connection. Is something like literally under the table? Under the table? Oh my God, it's connected somewhere. This down here. The stuff. I don't know. I just moved it for a second. Look what happened. Uh, the same. Yeah, yeah. Right. I, yeah. I think it's just the projector. I think it's on, but it's not. Yeah, like we're on, but uh, anyway, we had it for something. Don't worry about it. It was just a tape. I will work off. It was <laughs> yeah, it was a jiggle yeah. something like we want it, but. Unfortunately, we don't have a consultant using slides, which was the case in the other meeting. But, uh -huh. Uh -huh. Okay. So, All right. Um, let's just take up uh, Forrest's uh, candidacy. He did uh, submit a uh, letter uh, to us, uh, a rather short email, and um, did submit a uh, yes. application form. Thank you for the form, by the way. Yeah. Yes. Danny? It's working. It's working. Mm -hmm. um, Take a second to read over his uh, letter to us. <laughs> Don't mind me creeping. I also put it to this time. It's just a little bit. Like, because of it, or just because of it. Okay. Anyone care to discuss any issues uh, that we might have uh, with uh, force candidacy? Yes. Okay. Uh, not an issue per se. Mm -hmm. uh, don't like to show up. Um, but as far as this committee is concerned, a background in data analytics. It's going to come in handy. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty strong. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I think that's a, that's a skill that, well, I hope we have people of all skills and backgrounds on this committee. This is one that I've been someone who can read data better than I can, which mm -hmm. is not well, so I'm not you know, selling myself high on that in that regard. But someone who can do this is some is some is something that we're, we're going to need on this committee. So I think that's a big upsell. You can see us. 
Excellent. They can see us? We just can't see them. All right. So if anyone cares to raise their hand, uh, please just speak up because uh, we can't see you on the screen. I'm talking to people. <laughs> on there. Um, yeah, uh, and I spoke with uh, Dana Allen uh, about uh, some data opportunities uh, that could also uh, help out uh, this committee uh, through a group called Fulcrum uh, mm -hmm. that had some flood data that they might be willing to share with us. Uh, okay. uh, that all sounds good to me. Uh, do I have a motion about the candidacies of Mr. Malter and Mr. McDonald? I was yes. gonna, I would move to appoint John Malter to a three year term on the Natural Disaster Preparedness Committee and to appoint Forrest McDonald to a one year term on the Natural Disaster Preparedness Committee. I second that. Okay. Motion um, has been made and seconded. Uh, further discussion? Uh, again, the uh, openings are either for a three or a one year. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, how many three-year positions are there? Uh, it mirrors the select board, so three. Three. Three, yeah. three out of how many? Five. Sorry. Three out five. of five. Three out of five are three-year positions. Yes. All right. Uh, and do you want to offset those, or are you going to have like three from the start? Uh, I mean, if we had three that all started like today, sure. then they'd all be sunsetting at the same time, which may not be ideal. Uh, but. Uh, my rationale in the motion yep. is given the two candidates we have before us this evening yep. and Mr. Malter's extensive experience in the community, I would appoint him to a full three year term yep. starting today, recognizing we could stagger future terms. Right. Um, and I think Forrest seems to have great experience, but seeing as we weren't able to speak with him directly, start with a one year term, which would give the option to re up after a year. Um, and for future appointments, we could work on the staggering as you indicate. Sounds good to me. Any further discussion on this? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right, congratulations to Mr. Malter and uh, McDonald. And now do I have a motion on the appointments to the Conservation Commission? I move to appoint both uh, Anna Black and Marcy Lavelle. Lavelle. Lavelle, Lavelle. thank Lavelle. you. To, um, the two vacancies ending in 2025 on the Conservation Commission. Do I have a second? Second. All right, moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Congratulations to both of them. Thank you for all of your help on this. May I ask a quick question? Sure. So we can repost, right, going forward and continue to recruit, so to speak, for the open positions just because they're open and there's not like a time period. Yeah. No, in fact, we have open Forest positions. District. We still have a remaining open position for the Conservation Commission. Three we have uh, three, re no, two, two remaining? Or Three. Three, three yeah. remaining on the uh, Natural Preparedness Committee. Okay. I believe there's an opening on uh, recreation still. Okay. So yeah, oh. anybody listening and or Lisa, if you are there, so that, those are notes that can go out to the public who are, might be looking to serve. Right. Yes, I have a question for Karen. Have you seen any kind of, with our new process that's a little bit more formal, any push back on, on that, oh, I don't want to go through all that. Okay. Well, you know, I have four, so no, I haven't no, had but anybody. People who've inquired, you know, if they've said something, okay. No. No. I had a pretty short week last week, to be honest with you. It was only <laughs> three days, but I didn't receive any calls or complaints about okay. the process. Thanks. Yeah. And um, we did have Forrest join sorry. via um, <laughs> Zoom, mm -hmm. in case you did want to ask him a question. Forrest, I apologize. The board can't see you because of technical issues, but they can hear you. Yeah. Hi, everyone. How's it going? Hello. Good. Great. <laughs> You're appointed. Hi. Yeah, maybe you want to talk about how excited you are about being recently appointed to the... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> no, man, I didn't prepare a uh, acceptance speech. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I, I am really excited. I, I don't know how much my background was covered, but 
I am a, a Vermont native who recently moved back after about 10 years living out west. Uh, my wife and I are up on Howard Ave by the, the cider mill. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and we, we just moved back in April of this year. So just looking for opportunities to get involved in the community. And um, my background, I'm a senior manager of geospatial analytics for T-Mobile. And I also have experience with um, earthquake disaster response mapping, um, places like Turkey and whatnot. So yeah, this sounds like a fun opportunity for me. Yeah, we haven't had any experiences with earthquakes recently, but we probably should be prepared. Yeah, hopefully we make it a bit longer without any of those. Mm -hmm. Well, welcome aboard, and thank you for volunteering. Um, Kane, have you uh, determined when the first meeting's going to be yet? I was waiting till we had people on, on the committee to decide. Well, now you've got two, so they... well, yeah, I'll, I'll decide right now. <laughs> Uh, I have not decided. Okay. It will be in an email. All right. So uh, Kane will be coordinating that uh, for us, and uh, he'll be in touch uh, as to when your first meeting. I think uh, the initial start, uh, indication is that the meetings will be monthly. Yes. Okay. That All right. Great. Thank you. Hey, thank you for joining us. All right, um, unless we have other candidates to discuss, we will move on to the initial discussion to format, I'm gonna try to read this right, <laughs> to format of future town meetings. Hey, that's close enough. <laughs> um, and I'll just start by saying that I don't have a particular agenda on this. Uh, it was an issue that came up uh, earlier this year, uh, noting that uh, we had a lot of participation during COVID uh, when we couldn't hold the traditional in-person meeting. Uh, and uh, some people noted that the traditional uh, town meeting on the first Tuesday in March, which starts at 9 a.m. in the morning, not everyone has the luxury of attending because they have to work or they've got other uh, other things to attend to. Um, and uh, so we said that we would address this going forward. I think we've made the determination that for this coming year, we will have a traditional town meeting because we don't have time to uh, exercise a charter change, which would be required to change the town meeting. Uh, but that um, we uh, would like to start the discussion and see how people feel about it. Alyssa. Well, Karen made it based on the last one, so just to say out loud, I guess I would say I agree with the point you just reiterated on behalf of the board, though certainly welcome dissent, which is just to say we are holding two informational sessions for the process of the town of Waterbury having a charter, which is our separate ongoing conversation for that? local option tax and appointment, which is just to recognize like two, well, one's during a select board meeting, but a rather, you know, somewhat of a to do, or just recognizing it's a larger municipal change have, you know, intended for this December. Mm -hmm. So while hypothetically, maybe timing wise, we could hold the special town meeting need to change the format of future town meeting. Right, just to clarify, you're articulating, we think that might be a busy schedule. Um, I just would say I would agree with that in terms of planning to hold um, traditional town floor meeting in 2024 um, in March. Okay. Anyone have an opinion either way? And I invite uh, first the board, but then also members of the public, Kane. I've had a strong opinion about this for a long time. Um, I think Tuesday, election day, ad nauseum is ridiculous at this point. But um, I think that is the only, the only opinion I have one way or the other regarding town meeting. I think town meeting is an incredibly um, important part of Vermont's democracy. Uh, but definitely holding it on a Saturday might make it easier. Okay, so you're saying that you're in favor of Holding an in-person town meeting yes. and not going to straight Australian ballot like uh, Duxbury has, for example, mm -hmm. uh, but changing the timing to make it more convenient. Just changing the day of the week to make it more convenient. Okay. Holding an in-person meeting. All right. 
Yes, Mike. As a lot of you know, I've had strong opinions on this. I, I do strongly believe in democracy. And as much as, yes, there's been more numbers by Australian ballot, do people really know what they're voting for sometimes? I, I really sometimes question, you know, pe people go and they just, just vote. And I think at town meeting, whether it be on Tuesday of town meeting day, whether it be an evening meeting, whether it be a Saturday meeting, as Kane uh, said, I think that at least gives people a chance to ask the select board questions. It, 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 it ferrets out things. And I always say, as you, as people, as a, as a informed citizen of the community, if you can dedicate two to three hours of your time to participate in town government, I don't. I, I, I don't know if I think. I think I don't necessarily want to have people who are not invested in their community just flipping flipping a lever. I guess we don't have levers, but you know, you know, you know something. And I'm just. I feel very strong. I feel very strong about the tradition of town meeting, whether it be, as Kane said, on a Saturday, whether it be. In, I know. I, I used to live in Bristol. You know you know, 40 years ago, and they went from a day meeting to a night meeting, and mm -hmm. they had increased in attendance. I think that could be, because I think you're gonna have just as much problem on a Saturday. People have busy schedules, they wanna be with their kids, are they gonna show up on a Saturday? I think people are much more apt, I think, to come to an to a evening meeting. And I think since we have moved to separate the town business from the school meeting, we have enough time in the evening, I think, to get through through business. The, the only thing that you miss by that is have, you know, some some nonprofit serving a serving a lunch, which we which which won't give you that opportunity by having an evening meeting. But I don't they, know. They could serve a late dinner. What? You, you could have a, you could potentially have a dinner before the before the meeting, so I don't think that's you know really a detriment. I just believe in the in person process. Okay, thanks. Just wanna yeah. think about when we're talking about the people of our town and work on not making assumptions that if they're not there, it means they don't care and they can't no. take. So people are forced to choose whether to put their jobs in jeopardy to leave work and they can't be there if they have small children and they don't have childcare. So just because someone isn't somewhere, we want to be super careful not to assume it's because they don't care and they're not invested in our community. Um, the other thing is when we talk about democracy, we want as many people being a part of it as possible. Of course, we want them as informed as possible, but we don't want to then actively limit who's voting just because they didn't show up to the meeting. Just because they're not there doesn't mean they're not highly informed. So I never want us as a group to try to limit the amount of people participating in our town's democracy um, based on their availability. Um, also, I'm not advocating for Australian ballot yet. I might, but um, remembering that if we go that way, it doesn't mean we're not having that in-person meeting. We can. We can have it on a night. We can have it on a Saturday. We can have those just like other town we're doing the informational meeting to ask questions, to get informed, to be a part of the conversation with the select board, and then have the, the vote by Australian ballot. So it doesn't need to be one or the other entirely binary. It can be a combination of the two. You're just not having that floor vote. So remember that there are multiple options even if we decide to make a small change. Um, no matter what we do, it's gonna be imperfect. If it's on a Saturday, if people don't have childcare or they work at breakfast at a restaurant, they can't come. Tuesday night, they don't have childcare, or they work at a restaurant, they can't come. So we're not going to get it perfect, but I think our goal, our, my goal, I don't want to speak for all of us, I hope our <laughs> goal is as many people as possible participating um, in the democracy of our town. Alyssa. 
I guess like building on what Danny said too, I think this is really positive in terms of like iterative and just recognizing there's things we could change or tweak this year. So like one is if we're sticking with 9 a.m. Tuesday, I mean, I don't know what the tradition has been, but like we can offer childcare. That's something we have to do at my work. So maybe it's partnering with the children's room or others and making sure that we're offering that and advertising that when we're encouraging folks to come out. So assuming we're staying, I think that can be a like, again, regardless of any changes that do or don't happen. I guess the other thing, building on what you said, Danny, about like same thing, my bottom line is having more folks involved. Um, you know, floor discussion at town meeting aside, which is a way for folks to engage that I think, you know, I value and welcome. It's figuring out that like backing up the process. I think like part of why we wanted to have this discussion tonight is also talking about like at town meeting, we're coming with a proposed budget. and. I mean, many of you have been on the board longer than I and know that we iteratively go through preparing that budget. I know Tom has talked about having it earlier, but figuring out how do we have that engagement earlier when there's more time to really make substantive changes. Because I will say like at town meeting last year, you know, it was my first time on the stage, how exciting. But ultimately like there was discussion, there was dialogue, but things were kind of like proposed and voted down. Um, rather than you know having space for more nuanced conversation not saying that couldn't happen but i just think that's another piece of this puzzle again around regardless of what format we have on that day and where we get to just something we all can think about of like how are we doing that and i don't know you know is it arpa survey you know is it going on by line i don't i don't know what it is but to me like that's the end goal and a piece of that is what town meeting day itself looks like but a piece of that is also what happens before that uh, Kim, um, I absolutely agree with you, Alyssa. Um, but also to build off what you said, Danny, um, is there a way to do a hybrid, to do in person and Australian? Mm -hmm. No. Mm -hmm. Well, or uh, what Danny you would suggested. You would be voting in person. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Right. Dave suggested still, we'll you'd still have informational the, meeting and then he goes exactly. You'd meeting. still have the, the core, you know, yeah. everyone gathers in the gymnasium and has uh, and talks it out. Mm -hmm. and you still vote, it's still town meeting. Mm -hmm. You can't um, change anything though. Right. Sure. Uh, I guess what I'm I guess what I'm trying to say is how how do you essentially I guess honor is not the right word, but it's the word I'm going to use. Honor the, the tradition of town meeting while modernizing it. That's the million dollar question for <laughs> yeah, us to the, figure the, out. The, the answers. <laughs> no small thing. <laughs> uh, Chris. Um, I'm wondering if there's some information out there as to any other towns that might have tried this. And uh, I guess my concern would be this. A couple of concerns. If you change the date and it's a flop and you have to maybe change again, do you start to disenfranchise people and drive them from any interest of being part of town meeting? Uh, I know Morrisville, I believe last year, voted their budget down twice. Uh, if you go the route of Duxbury, where they have an informational meeting, but you can't change anything, and then the vote gets voted down, or the budget gets voted down, and you have to go back to the drawing board, redesign the budget, hold another meeting. I'm just wondering if the impacts of that have an Australian ballot is actually going to make things tougher for the board and the municipality and eventually drive people away from wanting to participate. There's no perfect answer, as Danny said. Uh, I'm speaking for everybody behind me here tonight. That, you know, you either dedicated to being involved or you're not. Mm -hmm. um, and I may have said this before, but I decided a long time ago that the one day I might miss or the few hours I might miss from work or whatever it may be, what took place at the government 
in the town that I lived at was important enough to me. Chris, I'm sorry. Can you move closer to oh, yes, sir. people on the on the computer? It's actually yeah. coming from this computer, to be honest. Speak yeah. no. <laughs> so up really loudly, or come sit next to me. <laughs> it was important enough to me to to not miss it because mm -hmm. the the impact of what's being voted on from a budget perspective may impact me more than the few hours I missed at work. Right. That's the way I was looking at it. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of things before you dive into simply making a change that you might want to look at before uh, making a, you know. And it could go either way. I mean, mm -hmm. yeah. you could find that changing the date and time. Uh, you start to get late at night people like me in the construction industry, you know, or people who have certain time frames. Oh, they got a screen. Got to <laughs> uh, a lot of people can't stay up late, you know. Yeah. They just can't wait through it. So that's my thoughts. Okay, thank you. Appreciate it. Sorry, excuse uh, me, Roger. Michael Franklin asked to speak. Oh, okay. Michael. Michael Franklin. Uh, hi. Um this guy I spoke about this a little bit at town meeting day. Originally, mm -hmm. um, I I love town meeting day. As we talk, I think I heard couldn't hear Chris as well earlier on um, when he spoke about you know people's reactions and things. And I actually saw him, I think, pulled over by Ben and Jerry's there, up the road. But anyway, about where things are, town meeting days where we can come with disagreements or not knowing what the answer. Is. Like I've stepped into town meeting day like not knowing how I was going to vote on something, and no. went back to the debate back and forth. And that can be with informational meeting and, and, uh, and Australian ballot, but look at our town and some things that happened. Um, in the village meeting, the police budget was cut by half, I believe, I was not a village resident at that time, on the floor. And it then affected things and, and led right to the merger. A floor vote by a res, you know, a motion by, a res, I believe I wasn't there, right? right? And a floor vote there led to solving a problem that Waterbury had been struggling with for a very long time, right? Um, back and forth and rescissions and all that stuff. But, um, and um, you can go and going, and you feel like, I feel like a more part of it, like, why does the town need a dump truck? Why is the select board spending making numbers up a hundred thousand dollars on a truck they don't know what they're talking about but the meaning i i say that or something like that right or ask the question in, in a nice way and realize oh yeah we do need that and yeah i'll go for this right so you know it's little things almost always what's voted on is what's proposed or pretty darn close and yes it's a budget framework right so things change with the budget over the years but throughout the year but it, it's just we have very few direct democracy things left. And I think we already have a hybrid system already where we vote on officers right by Australian ballot. Um, mm -hmm. So, right, we do that. Um, and I'm actually surprised that Duxbury went from all floor <laughs> to all not. Um, but um, I, I like, I think it's really important. The day could be on Saturday, it was mentioned different times. I understand no matter where we move it, there's different parts. Um, I understand um, what Danny said about making sure different people are involved and someone not being there doesn't mean they don't care. They, they might not be able to be there. Um, and I look at one other day, um, going back with the merger, how many people were there <laughs> that one year um, about the police budget and the merger, right? The, the place was packed full um, for that vote. So when something's really important, people do come out would work and Mm -hmm. and that gymnasium was packed full. So anyway, I'm a big proponent of of town meeting day and um, and keeping that discourse. I think it's very important. Okay. Uh, one question for you, Michael. Um, you're participating right now via Zoom. What would be your thoughts about allowing people to participate via Zoom at town meeting? <laughs> I'm... I'm on Zoom now, yes, because it also allowed me to listen to it when I was coming back from my kids at karate and, and eat dinner while I listened to the first part, right, enjoying it. So there's that great part. Um, 
I believe in person. I believe in person is extremely um, important for Discord. Um, I, I, you know, we've had, and it, I think, raises the quality. Um, and people will say things here to this phone that they might not say in person or say in a different way. Um, so, um, I, so I think in person is important for that. Okay. And the te there's technical, lo technical, logistical things of verifying someone someone is who they are or not. Um, are they a valid voter? Yes, we don't have a checklist in town meeting day, but you know, it could get to that point, right? If you had to, right? If you went to an actual um, paper ballot on something, but the neighbors mm -hmm. are checking neighbors, and you know, so. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you for your input. Um, do you have a, a preferred day? Uh, Tuesday, Monday, Saturday? I, I agree with the whole history of why election day is on Tuesday, because the agrarian society and and traveling into town and all that is <laughs> hilarious and, and old. Um, that said, is what we have. Um, yeah, I would, I would I'd like the day better than night, because um, I think people might be a little less testy, too, when... <laughs> Um, if, if the meeting goes on, it's late and people are tired. Um, but yeah, Saturday, Tuesday, you know, um, whatever. I used to be a town, I uh, used to be a state employee. I got the day off. Now I'm not, but I make sure I either take the time off or the hours off. But I know I have flexibility that others don't too. Good point. All right. Well, thank you for your input. Yeah. Any other questions for Michael? Not for Michael, although Michael, I love that you're helping us decide, you know, <laughs> have this conversation. Yeah. No, I just wanted to, because Chris m made me think that I, it's really important. I think we said it, and I want to say it again for the benefit of anybody watching, listening, and for Lisa, we're starting a conversation. It is something that I think I, most of us have been approached about by people in town, and it's our job to listen and have these conversations. Nothing might change, a tiny thing might change, it might change in an enormous way. This is the very beginning. There were two outspoken people who were able to attend tonight. That's it, that's all the input we've got so far. It's really important that we're gonna listen to as many people as possible, get as much information, look into what other towns are doing. We'll be able to go through this year and see how it went for other towns. This is not a decision anyone's gonna make lightly. We're not just gonna make it, we can't do that. So. Just want to make sure that's super clear so that, you know, we're sh not, I don't know, look like we're doing something we're not. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mike. I just want to clarify something. And Danny, I don't mean to disenfranchise anyone, but I do believe democracy is a process. It's something that needs to be worked at. And I. I think the relationships that we get, the information, I always learn something at town meeting. That's why I think that in person, and if we, if we, to me, if it went just to Australian ballot, I think we would lose something in our history. I would, I think people, some people look forward to it, look forward to the, the meal. Some people look forward, it's the one time that they see their neighbors. And I think that's a really important part of our, our community. And I think, I'm not sure what, you know, again, I can't, I moved from Bristol, Vermont, mm -hmm. who was a day meeting, and shortly after I left, they moved to an evening meeting, and their participation in increased. And you're going to have, no matter whether it be day, evening, Saturday, you know, there's, gonna, there's, there's pros and cons to probably each one, and you're going to disenfranchise a certain amount of people. The only thing, I'm concerned about is that we have an informed elect electorate that we have some vehicle other than information meetings that we could explain things and if there's something that's really valid on the day of town meeting we could change it so that, that to me is why town meeting is so critical you know Bill Bill Sheplock used to say this all all the time it's amazing as again we've had these meetings like the, with the police force where the the auditorium was packed full. And I think that's when you see is when you have a inch a, a topic of interest to people. That's when people show up. When you have the normal, you know, you know, people just concerned about how much that 
you know, loader costs, you know, that's not going to encourage a lot of people to come. And if you don't have something that's really engaging, that's not what why people why people show up they show up I remember when the children's room was a hot button topic mm -hmm. when that first you know you had a number of people come in so I think maybe we need something to engage people to come come to, come to the meeting you know whether it be if there's not such an important you know policy decision to be made that year maybe there's some sort of decision whether it be, you know, we see things of people talk about climate change, a discussion of climate change, a discussion of, you know, all kinds of, you know, inclusion. You know, those kind of things would be very interesting, I think, at town meeting. I think a lot of people would be, I, I think anything we could do to engage people. I used to chastise, and I'll put, throw my wife under the bus. I say, she just say, I said, you get the day off. You don't, and sometimes you don't show up to town meeting. I say, that's what they're giving you the day off to attend your town meeting. And mm -hmm. I just find that, you know, especially people that have been given the time off to attend a meeting don't come. That to me is the worst. I'll get off my soapbox. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Amy. Hi, thanks. I, I'm really excited that this topic is being brought up just to, to start because I do think that um, I've been looking at it from a, a different angle and I was just wondering, you know, in terms of your goals, I've heard you talk a lot about participation in the meeting um, and then ancillary, you've been talking about how, and but I, I, I've looked at it from actual votes, right? So of a population of the town is, I don't even know where we're at yet, but it's a, it's a, it's a actually pretty low representation of voting that's going on. And I, and I'm just curious if you folks have considered it from that angle, because what you're talking about are all these different solutions, one of which, or many of which may very well help increase that kind of voting rate versus town meeting in um, participation. So it, to me, it's two different arenas. Um, and the strategies and strategies and tactics you'd want to play, I mean, are some of the ones that you've already talked about, which which should definitely deserve more time. Um, but I'm just curious if you folks have really talked about it on the whole voter population availability. That's what I'm talking about when I'm speaking. So I'm sorry if it wasn't clear. When I'm talking about participation in this regard, I'm talking, I'm meaning voting, not just showing up and going home. So I don't know if we're all talking about that, but to clarify. I mean, talking about participation, I love everyone to get informed and listen to select board meetings. And I could give you a very simple example. I mean, I, I actually do, I, I travel a lot for business and sometimes it's, it's landed on town meeting day. It's not something I've chosen. I can't typically get out of it. Um, I do have to search to get myself informed. Um, that was a gr really good um, focus topic as well because being informed as a citizen is in the town is, is not easy. We got to go to a lot of different websites and things like that to kind of keep up, right? So, um, but I do that. And then um, if, a, if a hand ballot is, I have to be able to do that and or write ahead, right? So preparing me for voting while absent um, is, a, is an option, but how best to advocate or share that with the community with all the different options they may have, you know, that, that's an education arm, but. I just wanted to give that example of sometimes I can't be present physically because I'm not here, but I do very much would love to sit on that floor and listen to the discussions. For what it's worth, thank you for clarifying the varying points of view. Would you be able to uh, participate via Zoom if that was an option? Personally, I could, yes. Um, it does get a little interesting. So for example, as I'm a meeting, I facilitate a bunch of meetings and lead them. I do a lot virtually, but even that example where Chris was just sitting one row back, if there's any noise or shuffling in a room and you have hundreds of people trying to hear, it may be challenging. So if you were to go that route, I just recommend really investigating your technical plan before um, in the audio part of it, um, just to consider because Particularly if you are not familiar with devices um, um, and how best to set up your own home um, experience for that, it may be really challenging to hear people. Um, so you might need to have a lot of presentation material to support or things of that nature and or mic usage. But generally speaking, I think it can be done. I've I've done virtual with you know well over 300 people on a call. It's got to be well managed. <laughs> 
Um, and that's 300, not 3,000, which is, I don't know where our voting population is, but um, so you- We're not risking it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it can be done, but I will tell you, it's not an afternoon that you got to think through that. It's 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 weeks usually you got to prepare. <laughs> Well, Thank you for the option to weigh in. Mm -hmm. You bet. Uh, Alyssa. I was wondering if we could go to Karen just to, do you know how many people are on the voter checklist? So just to, so of the 5,000 in Waterbury, there's 4,500 on the voter checklist, just to say. And Probably. we're reviewing it next Wednesday in yeah, BCA. Yeah, well. <laughs> um, so thank you. And again, likewise, really appreciate the comments. Um, I was just going to, I appreciate even just the reference of handouts and to your point, Mike, about like how do folks know about things? I think that's another, again, like formats aside, I have an ongoing collection of the bound printed town reports, but like, you know, I think they used to be mailed to everyone and that's not the case anymore. And I'm again, not making that proposal right now, but I think thinking about the content that's in that, how we present it, um, a pie chart. I mean, I joked there was like a town manager in another town who joked like, you know, generational comment, your generation doesn't want to read a nine page report and wants a pie graph about this is how much money the town spends and these are the things it you know spends it on. So again, I think there's work that can happen there as well um, outside of the format question. Um, and I guess to say like we, we do, I don't want to bridge us too far, but um, mm -hmm. separate from town meeting, I think this charter is a conversation about because it isn't, it's an Australian, ballot opportunity. So as we're having this question about who is participating mm -hmm. and in what, um, again, dress rehearsal is wrong, but it's an opportunity for us to think about how we intentionally are getting the word out about the charter vote and how folks can participate in the details. I know, you know, like Karen, you often have that info, right, on like how to request absentee ballots and the, and the like. So maybe we can also be more intentional for the charter conversation about sharing that and seeing this broader, you know, point around just voter participation in general. Um, throughout the year and for other opportunities. Karen, how can we have a, a voter checklist of 40, if we're a little over 5,000 people, there has to be way more than 500 people that are below the age of 18. I'm sorry, Mike, I don't think I understand your question. You're, you're saying there's a there's a election checklist of 4,500. If we're, I know we're 5,000, 5,200 or something like that. You were a little- I didn't name the number of people that live in this town because I don't know. That's a sense question. Okay, you question. said the, the checklist The voter 40, checklist is 4,500. 4,500? 4, um, but it is, but our population is under 6,000. It's so under, how is that? It's about it's only yeah. That's why we'll be meeting on Wednesday, yeah. October 28th to see yeah. who needs to be slashed we from the voter. Uh, some people who are deceased on that checklist. Uh, not usually no. deceased because we can use death records Most, to, right. to remove yeah. people, but people who have moved, I can't take them off the voter checklist without written consent. I would um, think we would have 15 to 20 percent of the population are less than 18 years of age. It's an aging population, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else uh, online wanting to participate? I, have, yeah. I can share a little bit of information. I did spend some time today looking at some neighboring communities and what they do. I tried to stick in the school district, but that proved a bit of a challenge. Some towns I couldn't find information on their website. Kind of piggyback Amy's comment about having to do some sleuthing. Mm -hmm. um, so Bolton, their town meeting is on Monday night, 7 o'clock. They vote on Tuesday. Duxbury has an informational public meeting. It looks like the Saturday before. They do their voting on Tuesday. Um, everybody does their vote on Tuesday. Uh, Faced in is all on Tuesday. Um, morning meeting, 9.30. Everything is done on the floor. Um, Middlesex, I was only able to find 2022, so there's a chance they've changed it, but they were all on the floor on Tuesday. Moortown does a Monday night meeting at 7 o'clock. Voting on Tuesday and Stowe is all on Tuesday. The only thing I'll say about the Monday night meeting um, is that is also the informational meeting for the school. So from my perspective, that doesn't seem real cohesive for voters who are responsible for voting on both things to have these conflicting meetings mm -hmm. both happening mm -hmm. at the same time. So you can't be mm -hmm. at the school listening to them mm -hmm. and their informational meeting 
and still be at our informational meeting. So that was just one thing I observed about the Monday night. You could see that being a bit, although other, you know, more towns doing it, but nonetheless. Moretown has both meetings on the Monday, the school, oh, because it's the same, right. Right, the, yeah. the school board meetings held at Harwood, right. and then their their information, mm -hmm. or their- So um, it conflicts. It conflicts, in my opinion, mm -hmm. because yeah. you're voting on for both of those things. Okay. The info meeting was hybrid this year. I listened on Zoom to the school board. Sure, but meeting. still you can't be oh, yeah, no, you can't be in at the same time, time regardless of how- got one yeah. thing in one year. And yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then you hear Bill Shuffle in the room, which yeah. was a real thing that happened. Yeah. So from my perspective, I think Monday night would be my least favorable night for multiple reasons, not the least of which is that so. it would not allow people to attend the school board. Yeah. And they can only do an informational meeting because they're relying on the clerks to do their Australian ballot, right? So mm -hmm. they, they need to hold an informational meeting. So. What time is the VCA meeting? Does it been say in your email? Five. I think it's on the agenda. It starts at 5.30, okay. is my recollection. Maybe five. it's five. I think it's five. I just looked at the agenda, though. Well, could there's a chance. It could be five. Oh, wait, I have a new message. Duxbury's info meeting is the first Saturday in January. Oh, thank you, Lisa. Um, so the select board can make changes to the budget before it's finalized for the warning. Okay. I thought that said February, but maybe I read it wrong. First Saturday in February. <laughs> Can I ask a quick question? Yeah, sure, Chris. Karen kind of brought it to mind here. Um, does voting have to take place on Tuesday? From my perspective, yes. Okay. Yeah, because I'm not going to do it so, all the way. So, <laughs> if, if you held the town meeting on Saturday, you wouldn't be able to do any voting until the Tuesday. Right. If you did a town meeting on Saturday, you would be doing it in an informational meeting format, and then you would vote by Australian ballot, I assume, on Tuesday. That's the, more or less the... But you couldn't change anything. But don't towns do that? Have their meeting on a Saturday and vote then? Some of them vote in May. I didn't see that. I only looked in neighboring towns. Okay, okay. I'm, I'm just, I'm just saying I'm going statewide. Uh, some some I, states I, I like didn't, I didn't, I didn't broaden my search that far. Um, so if we wanted to move our actual town meeting with a floor vote to a Saturday, that would be a big. That would be a huge issue. And we'd lose our town clerk. No, I think we're <laughs> Well, it's one, I think we're conflating voting again. So voting being Australian ballot. No, I'm saying, I said out loud, like a floor vote. That's for officers, I mean. right. Yeah. But right. is there a reason we do that on a Saturday and do officers for Australian ballot on a subsequent Tuesday? I didn't think so, but that's what I'm clearing up because that's what I was right. wondering if that's what we're right. talking about. I'm seeing this thing that's pop up, but I'm not seeing who's talking to me. Like the normal ballot vote would still be on the Tuesday, but the in-person meeting with whatever was going to be verbal vote, floor votes would happen. That could happen. That the budget Saturday. special articles and all that. Stuff. That's the question. I guess mm -hmm. right. So is there anybody else on the board? Uh, yeah. Okay. okay. I, I beg your pardon. It looks like Bolton does theirs on Monday night, and they do. Uh, they last year. I'm sorry, Kane. Okay. I just want to answer the question. Bolton had four articles that were decided from the floor on Monday night, at least how I read their warning, and then they voted by Australian ballot on Tuesday. Okay. So they held a town meeting on Monday night and, and voted on their floor articles that night. Well, would that put you through the hurdles twice? I, mean, I feel like it would, which I'm not, like I'm not real keen on that. I feel like, <laughs> would, yeah, I feel like it would. Um, Duxbury does an informational meeting as Lisa pointed, this clearly says February 27th. I don't know. Yeah, but true. anyway, um, the select board of the town of Duxbury will hold a public informational meeting in person on February 27th at 7.30 to discuss the articles listed below. Uh, that was last year. So, I like so I, did I answer his public. question about you can vote on four articles, uh, not on the Tuesday? Yeah. But you still have concerns that, about that administratively. I guess yeah. that's the question we want to know from yeah, your I perspective. Like it's it's possible, but not. I mean, I, I've only done one town meeting. <laughs> Was there anything else that came up? Uh, is there any? Lack of pledge of allegiance. I know. No, yes. listen. No, that's no, sorry. Um, what I was going to say is, it, the, the having the school the school meeting along with the town meeting on the same night doesn't make any sense. Um, 
but also the more we discuss this, the more an informational meeting followed by an Australian ballot still gives you that town meeting feel mm -hmm. without, <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. uh, so you still get the Norman Rockwell painting while modernizing our town meetings. It, it sounds like an easy answer, and it sounds easier than I think it's going to be. Um, and to answer your question, it's at 5 p.m. Thank I just you. looked. <laughs> Thank you. Which is at 5 p.m.? BCA. The, the BCA. BCA. And which Wednesday is that? 25. Oh, good. <laughs> Thank you. Um, all right. Any further discussion on this? Lisa, you've come on the screen. Does that mean you'd like to speak, or you just wanted me to see you? <laughs> You're, you're muted. You're having technical issues. If you want to, you can message me. I'll give you a sack and now cut it. Okay, she's done. She's off? <laughs> All right. Well, I think that was great. You know, we brought up some good issues. Uh, Karen, I uh, thank you for doing your research in uh, neighboring communities. Uh, I think it's important to, to learn from what others have done. Uh, Mike, if you had any more information about Bristol and how that's worked out for them, uh, that might be a good input. They like, you know, a lot of people, you know, because people, you know, Bristol became more and more of, instead of a farming community, it became more of a bedroom community to commute to the Burlington area. And I think a lot of people who have nine to five jobs who can't, you know, either can't or do not want to take their time off to attend town meeting. Mm -hmm. They like the idea that it was an evening me meeting, you know, and then it creates the challenges, of course, with daycare and stuff like that. But I think whatever option you choose is going to be pros and cons to it. Right. And you got to sort through, you know, I'm all for having good participation, but I also like people understanding what they're voting for. Mm -hmm. I think that's a good point. So I'm, I'm thinking perhaps we'd have schedule another discussion of this uh, and try to narrow down some particular options that are going to work for our town clerk, going to meet many of the issues that we brought up tonight, uh, and then see if we can sort of narrow down and try to get a gauge of what the public will is. And maybe we can even bring that to the floor mm -hmm. uh, during town meeting uh, this, uh, this coming uh, March. Okay. And that, yeah. I, did, I did check with Secretary of State today. That is the process. You would have to place a change on the ballot this coming March to, well, at least to change the format of voting. Yeah. yeah, it would have to be on the The irony being the people who can't attend town meeting don't have a say in town meeting, but yeah. There's that. Yeah. <laughs> just the maybe maybe that would induce them to show up. Right, 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 which is fine, yeah. just like. Roger, may I just so. say, um, I just don't, I think if we're going to have this discussion, it should be outside of a regular select board meeting have like almost a special meeting because if people know it's going to be a special meeting to discuss the future of town meeting I would hope to think you know I'm disappointed that the number of people who have showed up today Chris, okay. for this <laughs> and I don't know if because they think it's going to be just a little discussion that it's not important enough for my attendance but if it's like kind of we're having informational meetings on charter changes we have had informational meetings on other things. You know, years past during COVID, we had informational meetings on the budget. And I think you had some pretty good attendance. I think, you know, for it to be just the, the five select board members discussing this with a few others, I think that's not a good representation of what the community wants. Alyssa. Um, I mean, I agree it's not a representation. As someone who thought it was really important to say initial discussion, I think our goal was to maybe right. lower the stakes exactly. a little for tonight. And I will just say, on a separate topic, we have the walking tour and open house um, for the zoning changes, which is an equally lively and exciting uh, topic for some people. And that was pretty well attended. I think we had 50 right. folks here. And I will just say, like, I got personal emails inviting me to that, saying, like, it would be really important for you to be here. And so, again, just that piece of, like, 
regardless of format, I think there's things we can do to try and push engagement if there's interest, like mm -hmm. make pretty posters, hang them up all over town, exactly. email all our contacts. Um, so I agree, I think when we make a change, we want it or propose a change or want more input. Um, this was a preliminary discussion with us and I think we can be intentional about making a bigger ask if we want to. Amy would want to speak again. Yeah, Amy. One more comment I want to really, really emphasize. Um, there was a comment, you guys are, you just closed with it, but I can give you one representative example. To keep up with what's going on in my own town is a part time job. I, I, th th I'm not lying. You, you dish out, there's a lot of content just in the Conservation Commission. I'm doing volunteer work just to keep up in the one commission I'm in. Um, so I didn't want you to leave here thinking that no one, I really, I like your sentiment, but to keep, I get a notification of the select board meeting because I asked for it. Prior to that, was there a lot of outreach to explain that that's an option? This is how you signal. Um, sometimes, and I'll, honestly, my personal calendar, like three meetings a week are the town. So it's it's a commitment that I, I wouldn't dare say people wouldn't want to, but I think making sure they're really clear about the it, the efforts that are being discussed and and I, maybe the marketing on the front end really could help get people's attention. I mean, I'm going to just say the work I do is it's you, you have to gain people's attention units. They're very small, no matter what you have outside of the town work. Um, people work professionally, don't, you know, they are at home, whichever, but their days are busy. And to really grab their attention to, to the local government stuff, it's not easy, particularly when it's overwhelming with rich with data, lots of data and information out there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you again. I just I can't I can't underscore that enough. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Well, thanks again for for taking the time tonight to join us. Yeah. All right. Uh, unless there's other comments, uh, we will move on to the next uh, point of order, which is animal control fee schedule. I need that we have a handout on that. Yeah, it looks like this. It says memo. Sorry, memo on the top. Yeah, third page is his memo. Second page is the fee schedule. Sorry, Rob. I didn't know. You don't have one. I have one. I can give you. Found a way to bury it somehow. Yeah. Okay. All right. There we go. Two things. One, I have a digital one. Oh, digital. Sorry, I didn't mean the audience. It's okay. I understood. Where we're at. Okay. So last adopted schedule of fees was. In 2015, uh, it says that we can uh, change the schedule of fees from time to time. And this ordinance. Can I have a moment? I'm sorry, I just have yeah, to please. Uh, you know, in my searching see. today, the town of Bolton is looking for an animal control officer, and they have a $250 a year stipend. And I was like, wow. $250, <laughs> so it's a volunteer uh, position. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, that was, really I, I read dogs. that. And Wasn't ours 500 for a while? I honestly don't know. We haven't had an ACO yeah. for so long. I have no idea. But I just thought it was the struggles we've had to mm -hmm. get one. And I really didn't think that was a very enticing offer. Mm-hmm. They probably know something. We can compete with Bolton, though. Um, um, so are these fees? These are eight years old. You said last updated 2015. Yeah. I would say I was finding it, Karen. That's the story I thought you were going to tell mm -hmm. them locating the 2015 no, document. I was looking for the about the town meeting. <laughs> so, so are these the fee schedule that he has on the second page? Is that what the what no, he's prescribed? No, because he's proposing like. He has following for consideration, the first of which would be to remove the entire first category. Um, this should be removed in its entirety as these costs are borne by the town and not a fee imposed. So like this top category animal control officer costs. Yeah. If I'm reading correctly, Tom's recommendation is that that should be struck from the fee schedule because we build it into the town meeting it's budget. It's built into the budget. Yeah. Um, 
he then has some other recommendations on the boarding fees that they might need to increase. Mm -hmm. um, we can have a conversation about the civil penalties and then proposal for additional potential policies that could be created, if I read it correctly. Mm -hmm. So just trying to see if this boils down into a uh, motion, which is sort of thing we can vote on. Yes, I can comment on that. Um, what Tom wrote here, let me reference, 2015's numbers, hourly rate for the animal control officer was $20 an hour, and it was $30 a visit to respond to a complaint. He has been paying $25 an hour with $50 a visit per complaint. Um, this should be removed entirely right. as these costs are borne by the town. I guess my proposal, Roger, would be that we have discussion around Sorry, go ahead. Oh, all I was saying was that he already increased, right? But like, the, his suggestion is to increase his rate with $25 an hour being the minimum, which is all I was suggesting, is what I would, would have also suggested. I think well, I can shed some light on that. Yeah, go ahead. I found the schedule of fee like 10 days ago, and Ariel gave her notice 12 days ago. So I don't oh. think that Tom even knew this document existed when he negotiated the rate of pay that he offered Ariel. So that's potentially why you see that discrepancy between what he huh. noted paying her and what you see in the it's, it's an almost perfect cost of living yeah. adjustment. Yeah. <laughs> As luck would have it. Yeah. And I'm merely speculating, but I, I know that I only found this like last week. Yeah. Okay. So. My, so all my comment was going to be was that I think that is the correct amount of money to, to pay someone. For Twenty-five an hour plus fifty dollars per visit. Yeah, that was that was my suggestion. Yes, ma'am. To me, the civil penalties make no sense. They're out of date. Even if you start at, even if you continue with the first violation of fifty dollars, to have this minor. Escalation to me gets no one's attention. I don't, you know, I think if you're going to be a repeat violator, you have to get someone's attention by more and more fees. Yeah, it's interesting that the second violation it's is no level. more than the first. Exactly. So, uh, that would but even to go fourth violation, they're only up to $100. To me, it's like, mm -hmm. I don't, some people are just going to continue the bad behavior at, at low fees. Well, listen. If I'm thinking back to our discussion and how this got on the agenda, we had some discussion about an unleashed dog, if I recall correctly. Right. And there was yes. a consideration of what mechanisms we have, as a municipality had to deal with this. So the fees came up. Right. I'm hearing from this analysis that the civil penalties haven't been updated. We had a then discussion around if that was going to achieve our goals of getting more compliance right. in law. I have to say, personally, what I'm struggling with is in general, I think I support Tom's recommendations as outlined. He's saying increase the pound fees. Um, and I think our substantive policy discussion for us as a board is around our beliefs around what the civil penalty should be. Mm -hmm. Personally, I struggle a little bit with the fact that like we don't have an animal control officer. So I actually think the most, I think right in Tom's three line email, the like one point was like, I'll work on hiring an animal control officer because that is probably the most important. I mean, the whole fourth bullet is around that an animal control officer could help develop a more nuanced policy to be included in the future. So I guess to the extent we want to discuss civil penalties, um, I guess part of me agrees with you, Mike, that maybe it would help it. But I, I think increasing the penalties for violations that we're not even enforcing to start with. Right. Um, and that's why I also agree with you. I think we should wait until we have another full-time animal control officer in place and maybe get their input on what increased fees may help or not help. Mm -hmm. So, do, but uh, would we need to uh, amend this ordinance um, in order to get a animal control officer? Or... Because this was adopted in 2015. 2015, and uh, unless we say differently. Uh, or we can the, change the schedule of fees without the need to amend the ordinance. Oh. So I think it, it just says takes the ordinance says that we have the ability. Oh, that's right. It did. That's right. Can we amend it with civil penalties to be, to be determined? 
Right. We could pr you could propose increasing it. Like right. that's the policy conversation. If you're saying you think it's really important that we have a higher second violation, you can make a motion that we amend the animal control ordinance fee schedule to increase the second violation to insert dollar amount. Um, I guess. Personally, I don't know that I would vote for that motion, but yeah, I think I, we have I, the ability I, I to would, make such a motion. I would for a second violation, but going down to fourth violation only being $100, I think that's a very much of a repeat offender. And that's, I don't know. It's, it, we see all these lifestyle issues that the residents complain about, and you got to be able to hopefully have some teeth to deal with it. And if we don't have an animal control officer, we're not going to be able to deal with it. Yeah, I personally don't think I would vote for any schedule fee change at all right now without an animal control officer. As Tom notes, there's no time period whatsoever on, on any of this. Um, I love an opinion from someone who hopefully has some experience. I'm also not thrilled about a, a monetary fee and whether it works or not and whether it's going to help or harm a situation. So without you know someone who's an, at least experienced or is going to do the enforcement in town, I'm not sure I feel comfortable making those changes now. So I'd be curious if there's something that we wanted to definitely make, that we felt like we needed to make a change, like maybe the pound fees, although I don't know who's going to pick up a dog if we don't have an animal shop. So, so I'm not sure what needs to be changed today before we have an officer. I'd be curious to hear about that. We also don't have a pound. <laughs> well, I mean, if we're boarding, if we're taking them to a boarding facility, that's going to cost a whole a I lot can't more find, than. I can't find a boarding facility. Oh. I can't find a bed. So we ain't taking them anywhere. Chris, you're volunteering? No. It's not that. It's not that. I think you wouldn't want me as a dog catcher. You brought your shot into a cannon. Uh, I did have a question. Yeah. Chris? Uh, okay. So did the dog AOC get done because of the money issue, or was there other circumstances? You know? um, not to the best of my knowledge. I think it was a it conflict was of time, to be honest with okay. you. I don't think it had anything More to do with the monetary show, package. Right? To Mike's point, um, if, if, if we had a dog animal control officer, uh, one thing that concerns me is about is it, with the municipality is certain line items running in the red. Um, I'm always pushed for fee structures that help support the municipality's effort to take care of those issues that you're trying to deal with. Um, and it goes back to what I said at the public part of the meeting tonight you know, disrespect for your neighbors, disrespect for other people. If, if somebody's clearly violating town rules, which is imposing on other people, that to me is disrespectful and there has to be some way of turning the ship uh, outside of fees, I don't, you know, higher fees. And, I, and I, I'm a firm believer that if the fees were high enough and we don't ever seem to give this a try, that people would look at that and say, you know what, I don't want to be faced with that, so I'm going to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. So could I, does it deter? Yeah. Uh, Alyssa. I'm just appreciating the last three sentences in Tom's memo, um, which is about of creating a more formal ticketing policy, just noting that like some of this is could maybe be a little more nuanced. Mm -hmm. So it's trying to actually address what we're wanting, saying that select board input would be helpful. He'd be happy to work with a select board volunteer to help draft the rules. And then the last sentence, the input of the clerk is critical as the most common violation that occurs is dog owners not licensing their dogs, which is eleven and fifteen dollars. <laughs> so I just have to say, like, okay. I would love to, I'm happy to work with Karen and think about it, but if that's actually our most common violation, <laughs> it's a pretty modest fee. Did I just hear you correctly saying that you would be the volunteer? To I, will, I will say, as someone who doesn't, who doesn't own 
don't have I any said, animals. You don't have a dog in this fight? I, oh, literally. Yeah. Stuffed animals only. <laughs> All right. Not yes. that you're asking, but just to be clear, I'm not look, I don't personally have any desire to increase the licensing fee of 11 and 15. But the penalty might be actually 9 or 11. Right. I don't know why oh. it's 11 and 15. We found that. Um, you can't afford that. You can't afford that. But, but, I do feel like in situations like what happened recently where a local dog owner with an unlicensed dog, tons of calls and complaints mm -hmm. about the dog running around the neighborhood, I don't think it's appropriate for him to then be able to walk in and just license his dog for the same $11. Um, even the late fee is like $4. I mean, it, it's it, he should have done the responsible thing before April 1st and licensed his dog. So, I always do. Yeah. So. The responsible okay. thing and license your dog. Um, I'm just feeling like this, along with ordinances and other things we've talked about the last couple meetings, it always boils down to, and Alyssa brought it up, enforcement. We don't have enforcement. So as we talk about these ordinances, regardless of whether it's animal control or loitering or what have you, or noise, we, we don't have enforcement for it. So we could charge a million dollars a head for a dog, mm -hmm. but it doesn't matter if we don't have enforcement. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, the problem comes, Kane, if that same dog were to bite somebody. Right. Then, then the health officer gets involved, the dog gets taken away by, through that avenue. Right. And then, and then I have a little bit more enforcement. But just a dog running around the neighborhood doesn't provoke, doesn't provoke any action at this point right. because we don't have an ACL. So right, but if we, I mean, we have an AC uh, animal control officer position, yeah, just it's just not filled out. Just not filled. That's right. And, with, and that person does exercise some authority uh, in, in enforcement. Um, so I, we've had a lot of good discussion on this. Uh, I heard that Alyssa was willing to, as Tom suggested, work with the, the clerk and uh, with him to come up with uh, some uh, recommended. Uh, changes to the ordinance uh, and fee schedule. You want to, I don't I know if we need to vote on that, but uh, if she's willing to accept it. I make it, a motion to that effect. Okay. I would say contingent upon reintroducing it on the agenda when we have an animal control officer. <laughs> no, we'll do it sooner if we come up with them sooner. All right, I have a motion. Uh, do we have a second? Oh, I thought that was a joke. Uh, so no. <laughs> no, 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 no. Don't take those seriously. Uh, okay, moved and seconded. Uh, any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right, we're moving forward. Uh, the stop sign at uh, the corner of Perry Hill and Hoff. All right. May, the public works director would like you to approve or give permission for the Public Works Department to place a stop sign on Perry Hill Road at the intersection of Huff Road if you are traveling east. My understanding is that's where a yield sign already exists. Yes. Mm -hmm. And also permission to add that to the highway ordinance. So moved. Have. Moved, do we have a second? Okay, moved and second. Now discussion, Mike. Have there been any public complaints about that, or is that this just a bill? It's a lot of near misses. Yeah, and I, I have been in those near misses. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's confusing. That's, that's all I need to know. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I, I have been in a similar position. Person, just one person situation up there. A lot of near misses. It, it's not clear as to who has the right way. Okay, that's. Um, I'm not aware of any situations I just got a text <laughs> yeah. because well th what is confusing is that Perry Hill makes a, a sharp right uh, left turn there right. uh, and it, otherwise it looks like a T where you would expect to have a stop sign coming when you're coming into this road and Huff Road moves to the right uh, and you have people coming from any given direction you just have a yield sign you don't really it isn't clear who you yield That's why to. Mike Hedges' house, right? Yeah, I, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah, right near the horse farm. Um, yeah, Kane says there's he's been there a number of times. A bunch of clear misses, yeah. near misses. Well, it's just that that people coming off of Perry Hill assume they have the right of way and take that turn super hard as the traffic is coming from both angles. It's a stop sign is a good idea. Yeah. 
right. Moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abs abstentions? All right. We will get a stop sign at the corner of Perry Hill. And add it to the ordinance. And add it to the ordinance. Thank you. Okay. Board liaison updates. Um, Karen and I put this on the agenda uh, because uh, we did introduce this idea of board liaisons uh, earlier this year and uh, I think to a certain extent they're working but we introduced them without a lot of clarity as to what the role of the liaison is and how that gets followed up on. Um, so. Uh, I'd like to just open it up to, for discussion. I do have a couple of thoughts on it, but uh, first of all, maybe you can just, we can go around and talk about your role as a liaison and uh, how, how it's working, whether you have any particular recommendations going forward. Anyone want to start? I'll start. Mike? I've had a number of conversations with Billy before <laughs> about the Conservation uh, Commission, and one, I'm glad to see there were two people here that, you know, they have, they have had a lot of problems. And as I told him, sometimes it's not necessarily, it's what the commission has on their plate. If you don't have kind of a, a big sexy item or something coming down, uh, you, know, you know, there's not as much interest. And I think, you know, for a lot of time, the wildlife corridor was an interest. I think that's sparking itself up uh, again. Mm -hmm. And I think there's just some interest starting again. It's just a matter of beating the bushes. And, you know, we have, we have talked about it. It's, it, it, you know, their community mapping mm -hmm. project, I think that created a lot of interest and buzz. So I think that that's kind of a good thing. Um, DRB, a little different, haven't had, they kind of want, just leave us alone, let us do our thing. Mm -hmm. Kind of, you know, we, and they will be glad to tell, you know, tell us their opinion, opinions. You know, as I think I've discussed before, one of their biggest things are, is they want things, planning items that are very, Define that they can make decisions on, mm -hmm. and that's their. I think their their biggest issue is that sometimes they can't deny something because what current stage zoning is is at mm -hmm. doesn't. You know, I've had the famous thing, the parking spaces that have been issued right. twenty times over, and that's that, that's where they have their their stresses. So I think I think the planning commission is. Doing their job, getting you know, getting zoning rewrites done, and as that kind of occurs, I think that's going to clear a lot of things up with the uh, DRB. And I think they're, it, it's a good it's a good commission. Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of people on the on the board there, you know, longtime members. I think it's a very solid board. I don't think there's a lot of problems there. Okay, great. Others. Uh, the Natural Disaster Preparedness Committee's gone great, which is hired to you guys. <laughs> Congratulations. Set up a meeting soon. You'll get an email. Can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> there. Right. I'll go quickly because I was hoping to get to each monthly EFUD meeting, and it's proven really a schedule challenge on a Wednesday at 4.30. I've been, I've only been, been to one. Mm -hmm. um, and this month was canceled. So, schedule-wise has been, I know you've been to at least one, right? Didn't you get to? Yeah, maybe so, two. Yeah, but so, not many. I, uh, and it's only once a month, too, which is, a, you know, good and bad. Um, so, schedule-wise, that, that's been just tough in the work day. Mm -hmm. um, so, I feel a little bit like I'm not, you know, doing my liaising mm -hmm. uh, enough, up to snuff, but we'll see, you know, hope how that continues in the future and just stay in touch. But I don't know, I'm, I've been trying to think if there's a better way to just stay in touch with them or ensure I'm, you know, reading the minutes or whatever it might be. But for now, it's been a little bit lackluster on my end. 
just as a comment, Danny, I don't think you have to be there at every or even most meetings. I think that there's an open mm -hmm. dialogue that you're there and they know they can an mm -hmm. ask you questions and you could answer, answer questions. You know, that two-way dialogue, I think that's what's the important thing. And I think most of these commissions, if, if you go and you're there, you know, occasionally, mm -hmm. you know, that's all that, it's just, they're just not out in the weeds mm -hmm. and stuff like that. They want, they want to feel that they have some sense of support. And if you're there supporting them, it's not just coming to every, you know, you know, meeting and stuff like that. I don't think that's necessary by any of us going to oh, every, sure. every meeting. Yeah. Thanks, Mike. Okay, thanks. Alyssa? This is really interesting, and I appreciate it being on the agenda. Um, I would say, so formally, I'm the liaison to the Planning Commission, and I would say, um, certainly, I've tried to update you all in general about what was happening and attend meeting as much as I can. Um, again, the scheduling is sometimes challenging. Um, I think it's interesting, like, the Planning Commission really explicitly um, I guess one to give an update, like I said, the zoning walking tour went well. I think it was an effective engagement tool. We just say that the materials are still on the website um, and there will be another walking tour for the next phase and I'm sure I'll tell you about it at the next meeting. Um, but it was a good way to, uh, for, uh, we, we talked about with town meeting, you know, kind of this like lower stakes engagement and there was like opportunities for members. They actually like shaded gray whole sections of the, um, proposed bylaws and said we haven't reviewed this yet so like don't you know wrecking their meeting right now I was actually just gonna say I can go try and grab someone um, but it was a good way to kind of like share information really clearly for the downtown area they have literally a slider map so you can click on your house on Main Street see what you're zoned as right now what it allows and then what they're proposing so really like giving folks who own property in town really concrete information about what proposed changes might you um, be happening and I would say in terms of like the liaison role I think in particular for the Planning Commission because they're proposing regulations like making sure we on the select board are on the same page um, and so to the extent there's ways to do that more effectively um, I would say if anything like a, a critique or a valid point I've heard from Planning Commission members is like well Alyssa you're really steeped in this stuff and know it really well and does that mean the rest of the board is? And that's not like disparaging to everyone, but they're going like, is you coming to every single meeting when you're already so um, involved in this effective or would it be better to have more folks get exposed to what the Planning Commission is doing week to week? And so I just wanted to say that, you know, mm -hmm. in the spirit of, I'm happy to cons consider playing the role. I think it probably does make sense to have specific liaisons um, just for continuity and connection and that type of thing. Um, but thinking about that sharing back and forth. Um, and the other piece I would say is like housing task force. So Kane and I have both been going to those meetings and um, Joe, who's the chair of that, at one point said like, well, what are the select board expectations of our group? And in that case, we have kind of the committee outline in charge that we as a select board approved. Um, but beyond that, you know, I say like, I'm giving you, you know, my take. I'm not necessarily speaking on behalf of the board. So. Um, to the extent, you know, and I've just stuck to kind of what we already approved, um, but if there's, I don't know if that's more regular opportunities or being more clear at the outset or having committees check back in. Again, I don't, to be clear, think anyone's like careening off in a diff different direction, but you know, in terms of like various policy proposals, um, if they're looking for kind of guidance or support from the select board, I mm -hmm. we don't have like a, Besides going to me personally, we haven't been brought the. I haven't necessarily brought all those back to the full group in every case. Right. Right. Yeah, um, and I think part of the reason for putting this on the agenda tonight was uh, a we're going into budgeting season, so to the extent that any of these committees or commissions have budgetary issues that need to be taken into consideration for 2020, uh, 2024. It's uh, an important point. Uh, and then also, I, I have gotten some feedback from Martha on the Planning Commission, also from Billy Vigdor. Just wanting to know what the mandate is uh, and, and where the support from the select board is. And they sort of come to me as chair 
Um, but obviously we all have one vote on this uh, board. So I wanted to sort of you know, push that back a little bit and say, you know, does it make sense to invite them to come to the select board once a year and report out of, as to what they feel like they've been doing, get further clarification about what their mandate is, uh, and, or can we just do that through this uh, liaison uh, format? Um, so I guess that's sort of a question back to you. My, my thoughts are, I think it'd be great to have the chair and, and anyone else come year, at least yearly. Mm -hmm. And obviously there's more going on more often, but um, when Tom was first hired, he talked about the idea of like a municipal calendar outside of what already exists, like this kind of ongoing thing, things that we let flip, like bills review a million times or bills raised, you know, the things that just are going to need to happen. And if we could just schedule it and knew that it was coming, we wouldn't have to scramble and put it on if we could schedule each committee. Um, you know, once per year, uh, because there are some times where I'm like, I don't even know what the Conservation Commission is working on at all right now, and, right. you know, it's no, I haven't asked, right, but, so, that would be my hope. Mm -hmm. And they're a good example, actually, the Conservation Commission started an annual calendar on their town committee website that has these types of things, <laughs> saying, like, we probably have to propose a budget in December, so I, yeah, I would echo, I think folks coming in really makes sense, just in terms of, in the spirit of a town meeting conversation, like, dialogue about, like, what is your group doing, how can we support you, um, and making sure folks are on the same page. I would say one other piece that just, I thought of when you said Martha, is, a thing I would like to do better as a liaison, and I think is thinking about things that were relevant. So like an oversight that came up at the planning and zoning meeting is, we appointed someone to the Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission, the forgot to tell the planning commission, have been to like seven meetings since, but they, and so they were like, yeah, this person introduced himself and said he was the new rep, and it was in part because it had been Steve for so long who played both, but I think it certainly you know brought to my attention of like, oh, making sure you know, I often will say when I attend the planning commission meetings that I mention things that are relevant. So, for example, I mentioned the charter change because it is relevant to zoning administrators, which is something the planning commission has been involved in. But I think it was just a good reminder to me that I do think part of the liaison role mm -hmm. is thinking about what things is the other group thinking about. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that being a group conversation more regularly would be really positive. Okay. And I've been serving as the uh, liaison to the rec committee. Uh, I haven't been to every meeting, but I've been to a few of them. Uh, and part of uh, the challenge with them is that uh, they used to be very directly engaged because we didn't have any rec staff to mention uh, other than uh, director for the summer program. And then for the past uh, several years, we've been increasing the staffing around uh, rec and so they become more of an advisory body uh, and there's a certain lack of clarity as to what they're advising on uh, and uh, so I suggested that uh, they take a look at the projects because there are any number of recommendations on what should be built and what needs to be further developed and I said if you could prioritize those for the remainder of this calendar year, and then more particularly for uh, the budget of 2024, that would be particularly helpful. And that's really where they focused a lot of their effort and they've come up with a, uh, plan, uh, a whole evaluation strategy uh, that they finally finalized uh, this last uh, Thursday. And they'll be going through each project and presenting us with uh, a list of their priorities for 2024. Cool. So. I think that is, that is helpful. Uh, maybe going forward, we can work on developing a calendar. Uh, there are a couple that we have not even dealt with, like the Tree Commission. Uh, I mean, as a committee, I'm not sure. But, uh, you know, there's- We changed its name. Yeah, we we adopted the Tree Ordinance. Yes. Good point. <laughs> Good point. Yes. 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 The Commissioners. commissioners. Yes, the commissioners. Roger. Sorry. Amy yeah. has asked if, uh, oh, sure. Amy, it sounds like they are supporting. Okay. I guess she's all set. Are you sure, Amy? There's I was just going to say that um, the other added benefit that hasn't really been discussed, but if considering inviting a larger, you know, the commission as itself, it's really important for us to, as members, to hear directly from you instead of distilled points through um, through a leader. Not to say that in my case, Billy is an amazing communicator. He's very transparent, has all of that. 
but there's also the aspects of how you folks think and um, translate ideas um, can be very helpful <laughs> for mm -hmm. um, guiding the team and, and understanding where the gaps are in terms of maybe some questions that you folks have and or direction. Um, I think it could build a real good partnership. And not to mention, there's several people that don't even know what the, your faces look like. Um, so when they hear the name, they're like, oh, yeah, I know this person. But then they can't place where they where they may or may not have seen them. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mike, just a real quick. I think Alyssa's point is really well taken. I think it would be really helpful to have some sort of organized plan on when they're when some of these commissions and boards are going to report to us. But I think they have done that. But I don't think it's been in a, on an organized. You know, it's usually when something comes. You know, a, a big ticket item comes up. The planning commissions. You know, here or the conservation commission has been here. Mm -hmm. All the commissions. For the most part, the the bigger ones have, I think, maybe not annually, but pretty close to annually, been been reporting to us. Mm -hmm. Melissa, and just to further that, Mike, I think it's also just a check to like make sure everyone metaphorically is rowing in the same direction. Just to say, I haven't experienced, but I think like we talked about how do we recruit and retain volunteer committee members who are already volunteering right. their time and I think there's nothing worse than like oh I'm volunteering my time to further this initiative and I'll say like tree care ordinance being a good one and then it came up and like I had questions and so I think again to that like how do we earlier on check in about like okay this is what you're thinking of proposing and this is what that's going to mean for other groups and commissions development review boards also a great example they want things that actually require the planning commission to propose regulations for us to adopt so making sure we know what the development review board is asking for to make sure that the planning commission knows and that we're down to adopt it and that all all of us are talking i think like personally that's something i'm interested in is figuring out how can we have big picture goals as a town and then figure out how all of the different you know constituent pieces are all moving towards those same goals we're on the same page okay so um Maybe a piece of homework is that everyone that's serving currently as a liaison could propose uh, a time, either specifically or generally, uh, as to when uh, their uh, appointed committee or commission uh, could meet with us. I say I've tried three times and they are currently meeting right now, so I will do my best. But planning commission is a tough uh, one right now. Yeah. Well, I mean, if they're here anyways, uh, yeah, we'll try. maybe they could just uh, pop in for 10 minutes and we can discuss what needs to be discussed. All right. Moving are you, I'm sorry, just so I can make my note correct. Are you asking for just the board chair to come or the board, the whole board, like the rec board to come? Or I, I guess just as many. I think we would invite the entire board okay. and understanding that people are busy and not everyone mm -hmm. necessarily can can make another meeting but uh, okay i think uh, to the extent possible i think it'd be ideal to have the entire board there or would it be we would, as amy says we get to know each other we know would each just speak to like the board or commission and then we would probably get something from you and then put that on the on on, on, the, on the agenda yeah we could do it that way or you could go uh, we can do it when we do the planning for the next meetings. So say I'd like to have my board okay. come. The next meeting are in January. Um, okay. Uh, consider uh, epic training through VLCT. Handout on this. So yes, I printed out for everyone. This is literally, if you Google the LCT welcoming and engaging communities program, or they sent a couple emails about it this week, this is the web page that you will land on. Um, and in the spirit of again, talking about earlier, I just wanted to bring it to all of our attention so that we can decide on if it's something we're interested in, in pursuing further. Um, in terms of talking through it, I will say, I've said before, I'm on the VLCT equity committee. This would actually be the second co cohort they're running. So um, back when the state was doing the IDEAL program, which we all talked about, and they're doing that again, this is a separate but complementary program. Um, that really is just helping communities be more welcoming and inclusive places, both to be and in particular to work. So I will say I would certainly not want to commit to this without talking with Tom further. And again, this is um, a first conversation. But one of the neat pieces about it is it's really like data driven. 
um, the woman who runs it, the consultant, um, Dr. Jude Raquel Smith, does has done this work in a ton of organizations and has really interesting baseline data about like basically like if folks are um, feeling welcome and included in their workplace, um, and that is data that actually, assuming a community participates in it, goes back to the town so that you can actually see like how you're doing and how that compares to other communities. Um, I would just say in the spirit of like. We did, we did equity training as board. We also had that with employees. And it's just another opportunity to do that. Um, parts of it that I think are neat is it's a cohort model. So like the last cohort had, I'm trying to think, um, Middlebury, Hinesburg, um, I'm not even remembering, but essentially you're going through this with like other peer communities. So talking about like, what are you doing in your town? Um, what are things you might be able to try? Um, so that was interesting. Um, VLCT is really heavily subsidizing the cost. So just to say you're accessing a ton of training, it costs like $500 for the town for, essentially they asked for three people to participate over a series of sessions. Um, I haven't checked all my dates, but I'd be happy to. I'm certainly interested in participating. They also support municipal staff participating. So again, that would be part of the Tom follow-up question. Um, if we're interested in applying, the questions they ask is essentially like why the community's interested, what we're interested in getting out of it, um, efforts related to cultural improvements that you've already undertaken. They mentioned like declaration of inclusion that we did. I was thinking about the employee handbook that we've updated recently. Um, again, the equity training we've already done. Um, so those would be things to think about. And then they ask kind of what three people are interested in participating for the dates. So I guess, you know, recognize we're just presenting this for the first time, but if folks are interested um, in talking about it further, I would think that we would want to formally, we have to like, you know, send a letter and whatnot. Um, so I would be happy to like work on an application for approval at the next meeting if there was interest, but mostly just wanted to high level bring it to everyone's attention. I'm oh, sorry, Alyssa, um, is, this, is this more about the culture in our office or the culture in our town? Both. But it does like include an employee survey, so that's, or it has in the past. Um, so that would be the top question. Like, if he has no interest, I'm certainly not trying to impose it or say this is what you have to do. Um, but I believe from the past ones, that's one of the things they ask is they do. I think it's voluntary, um, but uh, some sort of survey that goes out to employees. And it's over a couple of months, so I think that's a, like, further down the road thing from what I recall. So we just, because I'm on this committee, they presented from some of the people who participated last year, um, which is when I heard about it. So. And who would participate from Waterbury? That's one of the open questions. So they do, so it says eligible officials include legislative bodies, so all of us, um, city or town manager, or town administrator, mayor, clerk, department head. So, is it EFUD? Good question. I don't know if EFUD would have to apply as its own municipality, mm -hmm. um, or we could ask if they wanted to be included. Mm -hmm. um, It'd be a good way to get them. Yeah, we could ask if someone from EFUD wants to participate. Again, like that's my, I think it, it, it's an opt-in, obviously. Yeah, it's something to, you apply uh, for. They but. wouldn't have to apply themselves if they just got right. on board. Hang on. And it's only three people? Yeah, which is one of the interesting, they actually upped it. So the first cohort, it was only two, and they ran into candidly like participation issues with just folks having conflicts from life, so they felt like three gave a little more. Um, but it is, I think, intended to be like a more intensive training for folks who are interested with the idea that they can learn things maybe they want to bring back. Um, again, I haven't been through it before, but from kind of my second hand. There's a higher number of like where the fee went down to $100. So at least if someone, come, one of the three come, you're, you're good to go if you need 80%. Yes. Trustees can go, that's fine. Um, in, in the spirit of our uh, earlier conversation about fee structure, yes, that was actually a recommendation. So they came up with a thing and they were that's saying, given thing. that mm -hmm. participation had been a challenge, they that's were trying to incentivize it. Anything? I don't know mm -hmm. how much it is removed. Yeah, with the Zoom, I will say in part because across the state, I think that's one of the things they run into is just, um, again, I forgot. You have a tendency to wander on this. Ms. Focus, Amy spoke earlier about her, uh, you know, she thought I'd find. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I do have a part time job. Well, I don't see why we wouldn't consider participating in something like this. 
I mean, it says we can send trustees. <laughs> that was a joke. You would have to have three officially designated people, and those, yeah. would, those would be it. I is think this, so. Is mm -hmm. this the group that applications are doing? Yep. Yes. You yep. can't send like, like a proxy. Yes, that would be my thought. Would be, I guess, maybe that's the, like, if there isn't, I mean, I guess one is the, I don't know when Tom was, would be back, but would want to talk with him about his interest and potentially other staff interest, which maybe would be 1C. I'll tentatively say I'm willing to be 1C, but per the liaison thing, it doesn't need to be me if someone else would be interested in half the time. Um, um, and then we potentially need someone else. Mm -hmm. um, and again, I just, it's an opportunity that's available um, and a way to have some more training to learn what's out there, what other communities are doing, network with them. Mm -hmm. It'd be nice to get a town office staff person, because mm -hmm. if we were, say, if you had someone select board, someone from EFUD, and, or, and I'm almost going to say someone other than Tom. Well, know? I was, I was going to say, I love going to training surrounded by my employers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I never care. <laughs> All right. Uh, would you like a vote on this uh, endorsement? I don't know that we need. I think to officially apply, we would need a motion. So if you want to make that motion now, um, that's fine. And if not, we could approve the full written application and a motion at a first November meeting if that timing works. I assume Tom's in favor of this. Well, that's, I guess I would say I haven't, I've mentioned it in passing, but we have not had a detailed discussion about either his capacity to do it or, again, interest, because I would say, like, I'm interested in him, but would defer to if he's the municipal um, manager and has reservations. I'm not, I don't feel strongly enough about it to want to, mm -hmm. yeah, you know. I understand. More directed for Thank you. you. The first, for the date, yes. Yes, the first meeting that we are holding in November before this oh, application date, this is, it's, the, it's the special town meeting for... <laughs> Or oh, the informational uh, session. Uh, yeah, but but it's a normal meeting, right? That yeah. was the. Yeah. We've already got a big agenda. Is it the same? But it's the normal. So. Okay. But I would say, I guess I'm happy to like circulate ahead of time so we can approve versus having to discuss. Yeah. But I, I think guess. if you could get in touch with Tom when yeah. he's back to at least to say that either he or he'd like to put it out to the staff and see if a department head or Karen or whomever wants to do it. Um, it's a big commitment. It is a big commitment. I know. Yeah. I'm very interested in. It. I'm unsure about the time. Yeah, commitment. the timing is going to be tough for me uh, because of work. But uh, if I'm you wouldn't mind just uh, checking with Tom on this and see, and getting coming back to us uh, in, uh, in November. Absolutely. Yeah, okay. Uh, next meeting agenda. Okay. So our next meeting will be the 30th. Uh, which is right, we an informational the meeting, meeting. You were totally on right. the but charter This is and and as of yet, yeah. we don't have anything else on that agenda. Wait, we is that have, right? Yes, we have a third meeting. That's correct. I, because just it was um, right. not a normal select board meeting night, right. mm -hmm. um, That's just right. I did not make a draft agenda for that meeting because, to the best of my knowledge, that's the only thing we're doing that night. Mm -hmm. We don't have to have that be the only thing we're doing. Right. We can certainly have a full meeting and have. Um, I would have no objections to adding a consent agenda if you have permits sure. that uh, yeah. need to be passed. Yeah, like chair of one, two, three. Right. Right. Usually. Okay. Um, but I'm not sure we'll want to load it up with, with much else. Uh, uh, snack committee. Yeah. I'll be bringing Especially my parents. <laughs> my parents are in town, oh. so can't oh. wait. Really All excited. Right. Well, I'm actually excited. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm so excited. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they think that we're doing something special. Oh, I can't wait. No, they're coming. Oh, we'll give them. Well, so um, I want to back up a little to Amy Marshall Carney's comments earlier, whether we all feel like we or I am doing enough to get the word out about this charter. Um, I haven't. I haven't personally done anything on Front Porch Forum. I think Lisa's has done a little bit in the roundabout, but if there's something that you all need or want me to do, now would be a great time for you yeah, to ask perfect. me to do that so I have time to put it together and, and get it out there. Um, so. 
Yeah, I think it is important uh, for uh, you to work together with Tom uh, and I'll help uh, to put something out on Front Porch Forum and in the roundabout about this meeting. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we have some statutory requirements, of right. course, but they're pretty minimal. Right, but I think, you know, just uh, perhaps a broader dis uh, introduction as to why this is happening, what we hope to, the purpose behind it uh, will, uh, I think, help to get more people informed and ideally uh, get some people to, to come to the meeting. Because for us to meet just to discuss this one more time doesn't really serve a great deal of purpose. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is really an opportunity to get more people involved in this discussion so that when the vote comes around on December 5th, it's people show up to vote and they know what to vote on. Amy has a suggestion if we'd like oh, to hear here it. Oh, we go. Let's hear it. Have you folks ever considered um, recruiting for volunteer that has um, social media comms planning um, background and that could support Karen and Lisa and whomever else? Because what I'm hearing here is like in the business world, it's like a strategy. So it's like, where are we going to communicate? What are the messages? How frequently? Um, and I know that everyone here has a full-time job <laughs> too. Um, so that would be additive. And I, and I, Karen, I don't know your background there. So forgive me if, if that is that. And um, on marketing, <laughs> I promise you that. <laughs> but I know how, you know, seeking volunteers for commissions. I, I don't know if, I know that the budgets are typically tight. Perhaps you could consider that too, but in the short term, maybe you could get, um, a citizen that has that experience and could offer some ideas for a variety of your communication needs, like your town meeting and all these other topics that you're discussing for engagement. Something to think about. Mm -hmm. Are you raising your hand? Or, um... <laughs> I, I I have program project. I have a whole different skill set. I might be able to find some people, but I don't know if they live here in town. So um, I do know a lady that I uh, actually connected with who is willing to volunteer her time for our family farm um, and, and minimal time. And of course, I would compensate however we could. Um, but that was actually a welcome surprise to me. Like, oh, this is great. This is a lady who, who's moved into town and this is a skill set she brings in. She has a passion for helping out locally. So I was just curious if you hadn't considered that, that might be an option as one of your recruitment options for volunteers. Mm -hmm. I could help with skill sets and responsibility, <laughs> defining all that stuff for you if you need that help, but I can't do the marketing side well anyways. That was dumb yeah. about what he's thought about that. I, we briefly talked about it when, we, when he started the town Facebook page, so we did have a conversation around it, mm -hmm. um, but, I'd be I'd be happy to have that conversation with him again. Okay, Mike. Would we not want to consider? Because I know you mentioned Front Porch Forum and what about Roundabout, which are great outlets for the community. But I think we should have an ad in the Times Argus, maybe the Washington World. Uh, different people read different things, and I'm sorry. This, this is for the. Um, for the, for the outreach meetings for the charter. Yeah, we have to post the warning. So that will be in the Times Argus. That's right. part of the statutory requirement. Tom's mm -hmm. already made those arrangements. I can't recall the dates off the top of my head. Right. And in line with that, my recollection from you folks at one point was that when you named the Times Argus as your paper record because you had to have a paper paper, you also instructed staff whenever we were advertising the Times Argus to also advertise with Lisa. Mm -hmm. So when I spoke with Lisa, I asked her to please run the warnings in the very roundabout as well. And I agree, but I'm looking at a more maybe informal, like kind of a promotional thing, like people read the Washington World to say, hey, what's happening this week? And it, it's, a, it's another way to let people know that meetings are happening and some people are not I, you know I, I love Lisa and the roundabout I think I get most of my best information about town there mm -hmm. you know but you know I'm not a front porch forum person mm -hmm. you know? Understood. Yeah. and you know but I think from what I know I know a lot of people who are involved in the media world a old, old a overarching 
broadcast strategy is the best way to, you know, I know we can't do We TV. have an unlimited budget, Michael. I know. You see well, an ad on the 6 o'clock news. The Washington <laughs> world is very cheap. Yeah, I don't, I don't even have a rep at the world, to be honest. Not that you couldn't call and, and get I used to advertise there and, you know, for our foreclosures. So <laughs> they, we did better business there, <laughs> you know, in some of the big papers. Mm -hmm. All right. Thanks, Mike. Uh, King. If the concern is just getting the word out, just take an ad out on Facebook. <laughs> it's like 20 bucks. It's, it's yeah. going to be cheaper than running it in a paper. It's going to be, you just make a post, you turn it into an ad, and you go, run. And that's it. That's that's your button. You pick your target audience just the over Waterbury, hit run. Doesn't cost that much, and it's going to get to way more people than the Washington world. I will. I will have to get it on a certain, on a certain age demographic. Sure. And there's a certain age demographic that the Washington world is a better, much better place. Uh, listen. So I think, obviously, best case, more is more. Karen, thank you very much for asking me. I don't think it's all on you either. I think we all can help. I think, at a minimum, everything you've described makes sense. Front porch right. form makes sense. Maybe touching base with Tom. I think front porch form, doing it a couple times. I think maybe some of us doing it. I will say, like, I am not always doing it. So I think you doing it from the town is always great. But for Amy, your point, no, we haven't directly recruited people. But I think, like, one of the other informal networks is us talking about it as select board members um, and or talking to other community members. Um, I think like, yes, if we had a graphic design person, that would be amazing. Um, but I will say in practice, like we've had municipal staff who have filled in bits and pieces of that. So I would say one of the things we've just tried to be careful is not wanting to duplicate or step on any of those toes. So again, would go to Tom before doing anything there personally. And Danny's already offered to bring her family, so yeah. Yeah. Well, can bring two people for one, right? Uh, then we have phones. Okay, so voting so um, I do wonder about like a, I actually think the posters, I'm just thinking about, I know the notice more, I just think it's like, the, it's small print that's hard to read, so I do wonder about something printed that's not statutory, but. Charter fun. information session, yeah. Fun, fun night. Fun, we can make select for I think the planning commission. Charter to see the I'm not joking. A couple things, the planning commission, I think that word out was really, I had multiple people talk, like, are you going? Did you know about this? You should go to this. I'm going to this. Or I can't go to this, but I found the website. So like that path of printing and word of mouth was, was successful. Also remember that like some people, what well, we want people to attend, of course, and be for that it, it, it is pretty simple. So mm -hmm. there might be a really significant part of our population who reads whatever gets on Front Porch Forum and is like, cool, those bullet points covered it for me. I don't need to go to a meeting. I'm busy. I get it. So it's okay. Like, oh, obviously we want to do the effort, but I'm just saying like, just because if only 10 people come, it might not be because we didn't get the word out. It might be because it was well explained, it's two bullet points, and they got it, because there's, you know, mm -hmm. it's good enough. So, yes, and, and, and it's cabbage night, they might want to protect their house. You know, cabbage <laughs> night. I don't know if, mm -hmm. I, I can't speak for Generation Z, I'm not one of them, but I have not, I have seen a sharp decrease in cabbages. <laughs> it's true, it's true. I <laughs> teach my son how to do cabbage night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyways, that's a different topic. Um, all right, so I'm, I'm hearing that there, there are a lot of different yeah, ways. I couldn't come off mute. That last comment, I just want to, um, skimming, skimming front porch forum and thinking you have it can be very dangerous <laughs> if um, the avenue of validating the understanding isn't there. So I... If, if that's how you want the town to townspeople to engage, then I'd recommend really in closing those messages with a way that they um, to reach out to validate. Because I do think a lot of assumptions are made um, before decision making. And that's just general, not just this town. I mean, in general, people. Um, and I when the topic around having town meeting, um, the affect of that is you have that validation of understanding. Um, and that opportunity to get it. And so I just want to be very cautious when I hear someone saying about, hey, I picked up something I read and I think I completely understand what's going on. Because that is, I doubt, ever the case, particularly on Front Porch Forum. Okay. Except for I'm selling something and here's where you can find it kind of thing. 
I, I, and I bring that to you because that's something that, you know, we've been talking about on the Conservation Commission, particularly around complex ideas. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah, good point. Um, so I think what I heard is that we're going to try a variety of different media. Um, if there are volunteers out there, a little bit late for that, frankly, I think, uh, in, order to try it in terms of, but we, but we can reach out through social media, uh, perhaps an ad in the world, uh, or the TA. I mean, I'm prepared to, if, if your decision is to have the 1030 meeting be, a cons, you know, approve the agenda, consent agenda, informational meeting, then I will put that agenda together, finalize it with the correct Zoom link, and then I will post that on Front Porch Forum. I can mm -hmm. do it a number of times using my town clerk credentials. And I think Amy makes a good point. I'm more than happy to put at the bottom, if you have any questions, please email me, please call. Mm -hmm. You know, I think I try to close my, my post that way anyway. Um, yeah. So that if there is a, question to be fielded, at least they have a way to reach mm -hmm. me by their phone or, or email. If I need assistance, I'll reach out. Um, I can't do anything with Facebook, but I can, Tom can. Yeah. I, I don't know who has those credentials, but it's not me. Mm -hmm. um, so I can do front porch form. If you'd like me to publish something in one of the papers, if you can just tell me that tonight and I'll look into that. Yeah, but I think we want something written more, more like, uh, robustly though so so it might be a couple of days and it might wait on Tom's approval of the outline of what what the charter why the charter here are the points here's the schedule you know so the point wasn't just put something on front porch forum and call it a day the point was to have a well written out here's what's happening here's when you can be a part of conversation more than once so I it seems like we would want to wait for Tom to like yeah. when is Tom do that uh, later this week is all I know. Nineteenth. All right. Yeah, I'll be able to check with him in with him on Friday, and we can take this up. Okay. Uh, I just don't want to lose. Deal. I don't think I want to lose the whole week. We'll post the agenda, but I just mean okay. I just okay. yeah. I just wanted to cover a what Amy was talking about, and b like it's not a one and done. I you know. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, for sure. But I don't want to. Yeah. I yeah, lose yeah. the whole week. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Because I don't have the right robust. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Word. Right. Word. And, and, he, and well, even like with the Washington World, just get at least get in their calendar. They have a calendar of events okay. and stuff, and that's free. Okay. Calendar of events. Got it. Calendar of events. Um, let's. Uh, and you can just check in with all of us uh, by email. Um, going forward. Okay. No. Sounds good. My last yes. was on was Orca. Um, if we have Zoom, we can record it ourselves, right? But I didn't know. You don't request them, right? They just come. Thank you, Orca right. friends. We appreciate you. Because um, I'm wondering, especially for the first one, if it makes sense for us to actively try and get it recorded mm -hmm. so that we would also mm -hmm. have that as a resource. Are you involved with scheduling? Am I, excuse me? Involved with scheduling uh, when Orca no, shows up? No, I'm not involved uh, with that. Um, you should send uh, send a request to the office. Mm -hmm. okay. Would you be willing to do that, Karen? Mm -hmm. So right. Amy just uh, had another suggestion, which is WDV on their calendar, which I can do as well. Um, All right. Uh, and, uh, we'll continue to look for ways to get the word out on this. Uh, mm -hmm. I think we've already. Done I have it. my laundry list: Front Porch Farm, The World, Orca, WDV. Uh, round about. Okay, so that is for the, um, the Monday uh, That's the 30th. of the 30th of October. We're also planning the next regular scheduled meeting, which is Monday the 6th of November. And we have uh, that draft agenda in front of us here, which includes the River of Lights Parade road closures, uh, public safety experience ride along. Uh, I believe that's Tom's uh, suggestion that he would do a ride along with our new officer, uh, May Murdoch. And then a restorative justice presentation. Uh, this is the one to which I'm inviting uh, Jane uh, Willard, as well as uh, Carol Plant. Carol Plant. Um, and um, I, I was also thinking that we uh, it would be 
ideal to get a representative from the state police there because I think that's a connection that mm -hmm. clearly wasn't being made when uh, Lieutenant Wynn uh, made his presentation to us uh, a month ago or so. Um, so I'm going to try to push for that as well. A uh, joint meeting with EFUD on the process uh, for municipal manager job requirements uh, uh, in, in review. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, said, I thought we developed pretty robust job requirements in yeah. the hiring really, process. You know it's required, but uh, no, it's a, his, Tom's first anniversary uh, will be on the 1st of November. Uh, he started off as deputy and then moved to a uh, full uh, town manager on the 1st of January. But uh, we'd like to have that discussion uh, on how we're going to do his review. Uh, it's already been discussed a bit uh, informally, uh, but I think it's, it's good idea to just do it publicly. So you invited them or were skipped? Uh, I did tell, I told Skip that we're going to consider uh, inviting him uh, in uh, uh, our first meeting in November. Okay. And he said, okay. Okay. Um, we, had, we hadn't formally decided yet, so I hadn't, didn't tell him for sure. Okay. And editorially, I might just say we should put him sooner just so they can have a little more clarity on timing. Good point. Um, also, are, is the info meeting at 6 or is that our first agenda? I'm going to ask. It's I didn't know if it was two agendas. I would recommend two agendas, one for the informational meeting and one. Or starting this one at 6, mm -hmm. dedicating the first hour, and then moving into a select board meeting. That was a question Lisa had as well, and I said we'd have to decide to um. So the other one is just starting at 7, the one on the 30th, because that's the only item. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, what do you think about starting at six? I don't love it, but uh, I'm willing to do it if we need to. Could it be six thirty? Yeah, six thirty would work better for me. Yeah. We can start all at seven. Six thirty for the meeting on the thirtieth. No, the six. For the, uh, the one that you're staring at. The six meeting. Okay. Uh, the meeting on November sixth. We'll stick with seven o'clock for uh, the thirtieth. Oh yes. Okay. Okay. For the for November six, we'll we'll do the informational meeting at six thirty. Do we need more than half an hour? What'd you think? Maybe not. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so then we'll start the regular agenda at seven o'clock, as uh, printed here. Uh, and then move forward. Uh, let's move a joint meeting with EFUD up to the top right after public. Mm -hmm. And uh, I can work with you on the times uh, on Friday. Mm -hmm. Anything else that we'd like to see on this agenda, Mike? This is not necessarily for this agenda, but I thought about this, and we should probably have this in kind of our thinking. Um, Jeff Kilgore, our moderator, is leaving, and we talked about at the last town meeting doing something for him. Mm -hmm. So, town meeting's gonna come here sooner than later, mm -hmm. and we yep. should probably think about what we wanna do, you know, for him. Right, and I have had a side conversation with the head of EFUD uh, on this. Okay. Uh, we'll spill all the beans, because uh, it would uh, ruin the surprise. Right. Okay, that's fine. So we'll follow up with us in I just wanted to get it out there. <laughs> I don't want it to come out in my session, session ready to, and we're scrambling. I don't think we need an executive session, but I can, I can inform all of you as to what, what the thinking is on this, um, and I appreciate you bringing it up. Okay. Um, other, uh, it does look like it's a reasonably full agenda, uh, particularly with the informational meeting. Um, if you, anyone feels like they want to bring their commission or committee forward at this time, or maybe later in November, uh, you can let me know. Or I say so right now. Um, and yeah. Restorative justice seat. It was in the parking lot, so it is being moved forward. So, hey, we move something out of the parking lot. Let everyone take notice. Oh, can I put something in the parking lot? Oh, gosh. Okay. Ah. <laughs> yes. oh, no, it was just a. Uh, 
when we got that real angry email um, about the traffic in Woodbridge traffic, Center. Yes. Yeah, I do want to add. Cold Hollow one. Yeah, on Hollow Road and Guptal and Howard uh -huh. and, Perry, and Perry Hill. Um, it was your section of town. Yeah. Um, yeah, adding something to the to the tune of can be revisited in June of next year, but in the parking lot, so you're still thinking about it. Okay, what would you like to call it? Parking on the, in the middle of the road? Uh, leaf, leaf season? <laughs> well, it's not, it's not deeper traffic, so it's not like what, like, like Pommel is seen, or Palm Fret. Nobody's right. stopping in the middle of the road. Traffic's just... No, actually, that does happen. It does happen, it does. but it hasn't been... But it's yeah. not, but yeah, they, that's, not the, that's not the specific trouble that... Mm -hmm we're seeing in Waterbury Center, it's more like standstill traffic right. from, the, too from, many cars from the, the beginning of Guptal all the way to um, Hollow, and then 100 is completely mm -hmm. blocked, and so everyone's starting to take Perry Hill, which mm -hmm. is then get, becoming bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic, and none of it makes any sense. That is pretty wild. It's uh -huh. wild. Yeah. I took the high road. I've been having to go back and forth to Stowe for work, yeah. and it's. I was like, oh, there's just as much yeah. traffic up here. Uh, all of us have stories to tell. Oh, these <laughs> emails, I'm just curious, living across the street from Coldwell and Cider Mill for the last 12 years, did any of these emails suggest a solution or just a... Just well, a in the plan? past, there has been. The, old, the former owners hired traffic control. I don't know who it was. I can't I remember. It was the sheriff's department. Was it? Because that couldn't have been yeah, cheap. I, I worked... I, I, tell you exactly who yeah. it was. I worked yeah, yeah, in Stowe yeah. for years, so. and I experienced backups during foliage from the center of Stowe all the way to Cold Hollow. It's just the way the traffic moves on that road. The problem is... is foliage. The problem is... is Tourists have discovered Guptal, and they're like, "Oh, I could circumvent 100." Yes. And no, you can't. Cool. <laughs> yes. Or you get pinched. Yeah. You know. So living yes. across the street from Cold Hollow, like I mentioned, the sheriff and the traffic control that they hired before, they they work for Cold Hollow Center Mill. So mm -hmm. as I'm attempting to leave my residential neighborhood, I'm getting a hand because we're ushering people mm -hmm. out of Cold Hollow Center Mill. So I think an argument could be made that having a sheriff there to direct traffic doesn't necessarily solve a traffic problem. There's still just, a ton of yeah, traffic. It's not going to change it back up. so mm -hmm. much. I just felt like it made it safer. Yeah. And whereas I've been super, like, talk about close calls. Like, the past two weeks have been wild. And I at least, maybe it was a false sense of security, felt safer that someone had an eye on that. Not that that's necessarily even a solution at all, because it was the former owners who did it, but... Uh, well, and it gets back to what Chris was saying earlier. I think you know, people would get frustrated. Mm -hmm. So we want um, it in the parking lot. Just yeah, the parking lot. yeah. Okay. I mean, there's there's several suggestions that can be made it, that it won't 100 percent solve the problem, mm -hmm. but it'll alleviate or re relieve some of the pressure a little bit. I think, especially on on locals. Okay. Leaf peeper traffic. Can I call it that? <laughs> call it, we'll call it whatever you want. With your permission, I will call it leaf peeper traffic. Go vacation. Put okay. it in the parking lot for a future discussion. Yeah. All right. I think we're. And I'll say on the record, is... maybe for the next November meeting, parking mm -hmm. ordinance, I would love to get parking ordinance out of the parking lot. I just feel like, in the spirit of our different discussions, like it's an ordinance we could update now. We're going to have to talk with the planning commission. Candidly, I would be more excited to work on that than the animal control, but I've only realized this at this point in the meeting. So I'm just saying maybe next November meeting we do parking. The okay. second meeting in November, talking yeah. about parking ordinance? Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm good with that. Oops, okay. Any further recommendations? If not, well, our business may be concluded. And then we'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 aye.